Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our first little session zero of our Embers of the Imperium game. Um, I am Noble Crumpet, a PNG variety streamer with a focus on tabletop games and uh, sometimes video games like Metroidvanias. You can join me and my friends, uh, who will be unmuted in a moment, for our ongoing, hopefully, Genesis campaign every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, that get these people live get us on right i mean everyone's done that okay hello everyone hey, hello oh you're not all showing there that's it what's going on uh the screen thing isn't uh showing everybody but that's fine figure that out another time Oh, yeah, I think I don't got this as pushed to talk anymore, so I shouldn't make as much noise. All right, so, um, although you aren't all shown here, why don't we go around and just kind of uh, introduce ourselves and at least the, like, race class of our, our characters and aim if you have it. Um, why don't we go from the, the top of the voice chat to the bottom? Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, in that oh, case, no. that's, that's me. Uh, I'm a C. I'm playing uh, Letnev uh, uh, Captain. Uh, full name, Commander Gervalt Rondas Arkwright. You have to say the full name or he'll be very offended. Oh, no. Understood. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Ellie Briggs Art playing... Greetings, Carbon Days Lifeforms. I will be your shepherd for this trip. Terrific. So I am a I am playing a Titan um, meta or Wayfinder, I believe. I haven't looked at my sheet, so I'll get back to that. <laughs> Just vibing it. Look! Roll 20 change and all the buttons look different. I don't know where everything is, so I had to figure out where everything is. They did change all the buttons. It is weird now. Oh no, career's a shepherd. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I will be playing Nolly. She is a human wayfinder, or wayfarer. I can't remember how, what the exact word is. Um, and she is amnesiac, naive. She loves everything, even though she doesn't know what anything is. Oh, um, I guess it's my turn now. Um, I am playing uh, Sin Salway. He is a Cruz. And he is very tall and just generally kind of ditzy and a little bit of a weirdo, <laughs> as in a massive weirdo. Permission Damn. to be weird granted. Took my how, thing. How tall? I just know how tall. <laughs> oh, um, he's very, he's a long boy, so he's <laughs> around 6'10". Okay. So someone like box selected him and then just kind of stretched upward. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You nailed it. <laughs> he still fits in vents, but he like slithers around like a snake. He it's he's kind of disconcerting to watch. Mm, yeah, because the creatures are like wispy. Yeah, cr uh, wispy, but um, in an environmental suit. Um, ah. So, and he's a stealth character, so definitely a scout, um, intelligence gathering sort of person um but ha have a you c already knows this but if any of you have played dark souls 3 think uh the dancer of the boreal valley in terms of like elongated and aesthetics. Gotcha. movement aesthetics yeah perfect okay it's me um shane i am playing a she cry trail stalker kind of a grumpy ish not ex-military sniper essentially he is going to be the strategic combat person of the group i'm hoping okay. and we'll see how he fleshes out really awesome think garris from mass effect but a bird 
but a bird. All right. Well, Garrus was the bird. He was. Yeah, they were raptor. They were face. Dinosaurs. Yeah, they're, yeah, Dinosaur they're avian. Birds. They have they have hollow bones. I know nothing oh, about God. Mass Effect, so that's news to me. Base dinosaur. To me, hollow bones just means drink more milk. Spill <laughs> those things out. That's right. That's what's happened. Yeah. The the takeaway is if you don't drink yes. milk, you can fly. But also, it means full of milk always. <laughs> I can oh, yeah. make something terrible. Doesn't produce blood in center of bone, just milk. Oh, you're heavier today. You're on full of milk. <laughs> I hate it. I'm sorry. Also, Chris, I have a question. How do you fit a nine meter fucking tall robot in a ship? Because uh, I was like, big I went to compare to feet. It's 29 feet. Crouch. You're 29 feet? Nine meters is 29 feet. No, you can't Isn't know. It? I don't. Or did I do oh, the wrong conversion? I think you probably did a wrong conversion. Well, I mean, that does sound like nine meters. Well, is but... it like three feet per meter? It You're is, correct, I'm, I'm but I think that's the nine bullshit. Meters. <laughs> Chris, you got the book? I do. I'll, I'll open the book. I'll look for it. I wonder if it's, Dan. Wonder if it's three meters. Dan, what's your Sorry. character? Did Dan step away? He might have not come back yet. He might be on push, push right, to talk right. yet. Might be playing Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, sorry. I was on push to talk and I forgot I did that. <laughs> I was like, why is nobody listening to me? Yeah, okay. So, um, for the record, Allie, uh, young, small titans are only, quote unquote, three meters tall. Okay. Okay. That's that's right. Right. So they're nine, nine feet, feet tall, so not nine, nine meters. Nine feet. Yes. Yes. Yeah. More like 10 feet, but yeah, exactly. That's, that's why I was like, big. wait, did Allie do the conversion and then think the converted number was no. meters? That's nine no. feet. Oh, I better convert that to meters. I, I had nine M, nine M on my character sheet, Dot which I have a feeling America. I I did the. Oh, I know what it is in feet, but still put an M next yes, to it. Yes, that's that's what we that, said. Yeah. Converted yeah. it yep. and then converted it again. And then you come back like okay. a session later and go, oh, I need to convert this to meters, and then it becomes twenty-seven <laughs> meters. Yeah, she just, she just the keeps growing. That's yeah, what exactly. titans do, to be fair. But just a lot so. faster than normal. Okay. Right, Dan, who's your character? I'm I'm a Sar, the cat. Or dog people, the the carnivore peoples. Um, the doggins. I'm Yara Unlar is the name I'm going with so far, and I'm a field scholar, who's who's kind of independent but also pretty timid. They, the backstory I got so go, going so far is they had a mission that ended up isolated, so now they're just trying to chill with more people. That went poorly. Gotcha. All right. Dogs and dogs and their packs. We will hopefully get your characters, um, like to Good. have to have icons and stuff, uh, like before the next session comes around, which will hopefully okay. be next Sunday. I guess I can ask that now. Are you guys good for next Sunday? Yes. Yeah, it yeah, should be. Yep. Okay, just figured I'd check. Um, I have no idea how I'm supposed to come up with height and all this other jazz. Uh, yeah, I mean it doesn't have to be fully fleshed out, but I'd like to at least like talk backstories and stuff today, but also um, like other intro stuff. Because mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be our, our like little session zero, so it's very light and we can just like ask questions. Uh, I know a lot about the like lore and stuff, but I'm not a master of the lore, so we can always come up with stuff together if we need to. Uh, or you guys can like invent stuff to, to kind of add to the character. I know Jay has done a bit of heavy lifting in that regard with your character <laughs> yeah I'm gonna he has a... a soundtrack on spotify oh, of course he oh. does. mine um, does too it's the wingspan soundtrack <laughs> <laughs> with the wingspan soundtrack it, it's ubiquitous for shane though <laughs> that's so cute i realized i didn't put in uh motivation so i have to do that yeah those are things important things actually for this game like actual yeah yeah Things those were fun to do use. i like those all right i so, also did the fair 50 questions to ask your character <laughs> oh yeah i've seen those sorts of things love those um okay so uh i'm gonna go over some lore stuff to help you align yourselves and i'll probably put these in the notes section as well um might, might not do it during or maybe i'll do it like when there's a lull in conversation when i'm not talking but um, I'm just going to go over like some general like truths about this campaign setting. Um, first of all, 
It's based on the Twilight Imperium setting, because I like forcing people to do my hobbies. Um, mm-hmm. The Twilight Imperium setting is uh, a mixture of all sci-fi things that are grim and dark, but not quite as grim and dark as 40k. Um, it's It kind of borrows from a lot of different fictions, and you'll probably see that in the, the species that you've been looking at for your characters. Um, so, the main things about this this history of Twilight Imperium here. Galaxy was once ruled by beings called the Lazax, L-A-Z-A-X, who fell during a conflict called the Twilight Wars, and that was 3,000 years ago. That's like the first factoid for you. Um, after these Twilight Wars came the Dark Years, when all the factions were separate. Uh, like, they lost interplanetary travel, so they were just kind of left to their own devices. Uh, the Great Civilizations, as they're called, uh, now share uneasy territory in the galaxy, each vying for the now-empty throne that the Lazax left, which is seated in the planet called Mechatol Rex, which is a huge barren wasteland with a important capital city. It's basically the Vatican of the universe. Um, well, the galaxy. Um, let's see. We're also going to kind of focus... There's a lot of, like, big enemies, like enemy factions in this world. We're going to kind of condense that and just kind of focus on three for this campaign. The others will still appear, but they'll be, like, minor villains. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah, don't overwhelm too many things when yeah. a lot of stuff's going to be moving anyway. We don't need six galactic threats to the to the universe for you guys to stop. Just uh, five. Five's good it's, enough. <laughs> it's only a galactic threat if we run into them. Yeah. It's a threat to our galaxy, our personal five-foot right. space of galaxy. Well, we got a ship, I hope, and it's a bubble. Big sure, bubble sure. That. Maybe, maybe that, too. Um, so, one of these enemies. 30 years ago, the L1Z1X MindNet, otherwise known as the Lizix <coughs> MindNet, appeared from the Galactic Rim. They claimed to be long-extinct Lazax survivors and the rightful emperors of the galaxy. However, they are strangely mutilated and now cybernetic beings. The Lazax forearmed humanoid appearance is still there, but they're basically the Borg at this point. I was about to say, they sound pretty Borg. Yeah, I, like I said, Twilight Imperium has borrowed from everyone. Uh, these guys are a little more on the undead side uh, and like warfare side than the Borg. They have, like, a network, but they do have, like, individual identity, to an extent. They like just their have... Ego, their ego basically says, like, oh, we don't need to assimilate anything. It's already ours in the first place. Sure. All right, uh, next one. A little after the uh, Lizix mine net appeared, uh, a strange computer virus has emerged in the far reaches of the galaxy. Uh, they say it's able to turn machines on their humanoid operators and quickly begins retrofitting and, rep- and replicating itself. This entity is known as the Necrovirus. Uh, it's also the Borg. It's it, the Flood, but also the Borg. It sounds kind of like, uh, like a Grey Goo mixed with like the Blood and Borg. Yeah, sure. Every, thing. every assimilation plot. Yeah, and we, we'll learn more about them, hopefully, during the there campaign. There does feel like a distinction, but it's slight. There is a distinction. One of them wants to eradicate all life the other wants to uh rule the galaxy because they still have some shred of humanity in their undead husks this is almost like cybermen versus um what's it versus called? Daleks. Daleks. the daleks yeah that is the perfect uh example. the first time a necrovirus entity shows up you better go exterminate i will go yeah, exterminate every right. single time because i got it on my soundboard i'll find it later and then surprise you with it yeah, that's I found it now. Wow. Later came soon. <laughs> when you least expect it. <laughs> that's a surprise. Yeah, that's right. All right. The final uh, set of villains is uh, involving an event five years ago, which is much more recent than the appearance of the mine net and Necrovirus. Oh, yeah. Did we have a timeline for those guys? Yeah. Uh, so, Twilight Wars was 3,000 years ago. Um, yeah. Like, less than. Like, less than uh, two centuries ago, the galaxy got its shit together, and we have interplanetary travel now. Yeah. Um, 30 years ago, 
the mine net appeared. Two years after that, the necrovirus appeared. Then five years ago, so like 25 years later after the, the mine net appeared, there was an event that rocked the galaxy called the Asheron Disaster, uh, in which an entire planet violently teleported to the center of the galaxy, tearing a dimensional rift and also announcing the return of the Mahakt, the old kings that ruled the galaxy. Here's a number. 30,000 years ago. They claim to be the rightful rulers as well. Yes, of course. Uh, according to them, this is exactly as planned. So they're the Time Lords. Yeah, basically the two older uh, people that want the galaxy back are back, baby. And uh, they want it back. Also, there's a virus fucking around doing shit. We did a, we did a Doctor Who... I was going to say, they're either, they planned it all, or one of them accidentally hit the teleport a planet button, and they're just trying to save face. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. One of you knows what happened, but... Um, oh, no. Oh, that's me. <laughs> this actually me. might fit into my story, possibly, too. Hmm. Yes. Uh, I wonder whose planet. <laughs> I wonder whose planet. Uh, there's actually two of you uh, are kind of involved. Yeah. To think yeah, of. it's going to be kind of my thing. Yeah. It'll be the, it's the Sheikrai are related. As are the Creus, mainly because they used a wormhole. Creus are wormholes. Aww. Well, not they are wormholes, but they uh, they yes, they're master the technology. Experts. Once we get icons, I'll actually start to understand what everybody's actual aliens are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike. And then the yeah, Titans it's... were also like sleeper agents that they put out, weren't? Wasn't it? Or is that a different one? Well, we'll we'll learn more things as the game yeah. goes on. I'm just kind of giving you like vague stuff to yeah, yeah. know about. It's going to be a little hard to envision Nali because. Uh, her race is derived from uh, the fictional planet Earth. She's a human. Yeah. God. That's, Yord God, is so not difficult. necessarily Earth. <laughs> and so, that, yeah. Well, we've been saying Jord, but we, uh, I later learned that the is actually the Scandinavian word for Earth. It's like, oh, it's supposed to be Yord. Yeah. Instead of uh, like Americans populating the world, uh, Leif Erikson did. Uh, okay. The final like little uh historical truth about this world is that um like in the same year maybe like a year later uh after the asheron disaster a new council was formed a new galactic council unlike the lazax council that once ruled the entire galaxy this one was formed from several factions uh binding together to kind of make a united nations and fun fact they're about just as effective as the United Nations at preventing things from happening. Are they make rules, but nobody... It, yeah, they make rules, but nobody really needs to follow them, and they don't have the resources to enforce them. Uh, this council is called the Calaris Council, and it's technically the, the premise for Twilight Imperium's uh, Ember of the, Embers of the Imperium setting. Uh, it wants you to be a member of the uh, Calaris Council, because it's an excuse for a bunch of factions to get together. But I know that I've spoken to you guys before, and we've chosen a different path. That uh, a different want to be a cop. A different literary excuse. Um, Nomad baby. So the Calaris Council, their job is to maintain the status quo, uh, to keep peace between these factions that are members of it, uh, and also try to defend those factions and help them band together to fight galactic threats. That's why it was spawned from the Asheron disaster. And of course the L1Z1, but they didn't get their shit together quick enough for that. Uh, it took them 30 years. They just are saying it's because of the Asheron. Alright, that's short history. Um, I'm going to try and copy and paste this into the notes. I do. I did make a notes channel. Oh great, it's a... Uh... You can also just connect it. Well, no, that's more of a chat thing. So you can connect it to this voice one. It erased all of the ordered lists, so I'm just putting hyphens. We'll just be if six more. Okay, there it is. Oh. There we go. Now it's in the Genesis note area. Alright, 
uh, some stuff to get us on the same page of technology in the setting, because it is a sci-fi setting. Um, technology here is kind of on leaning towards the Star Wars side, uh, with a little bit on the Star Trek side. Um, technology is usually Lazax based in that it's like 3,000 years old, so not a lot of people know how to use it or know the inner workings of it. So when people do, it's it's treated as like, wow, you know a lot of stuff. Like, holy shit, you're a rocket scientist because you can defrag my computer or whatever. Everybody's retro working on stuff, essentially. All the Everyone's time. still working on um, Windows 95. Yeah, people don't necessarily build droids anymore. They uh, take a droid head that they found in a scrap heap and stapled it onto a new body. Um... This thing has energy. I can use that for something. There we go. Precisely. Yeah, um, but, but it's like not quite, is it just, and this is, I guess, for me, it as a question. It's not quite the um, Warhammer 40k thing where there's like a priesthood who sprinkles the sacred unguents, which are oil on the machines to make them work and all that stuff. It's kind of like Horizon Zero Dawn almost. Yeah. A little, yeah. Um, there isn't necessarily a priesthood. Maybe that exists somewhere in the universe, but that's not a universal truth. Yeah. Um, there, there is a floating internet, right? Because a lot of the items basically say something similar, but I would assume it's based on, like, you know, distance to wherever you get your resources. So there are the nowhere, networks, but I would probably say that that network is contextual. Yeah, so like the planet if, you're next to type thing. Yeah, if you're next to Jord, Yord, then uh, you're accessing the Yord network. If you're like at Renterra, which is the Letnev home planet, you're accessing their net. It's going to look different and have different like rules. It's like going to Russia and using their internet or something. That's yeah. on a planetary scale. I, I just want my sci-fi cell phone to work sometimes and understand why it won't work other times. Yeah, and some things like combeads, um, I'm going to say that those are probably connected to like a more like a Localized. A localized network, sure. I think they have a range of like something ridiculous, like a thousand kilometers or something. But uh, yeah, they, they connect to each other, not necessarily to the end. Okay. Um, so long range communication, uh, like between um, planets and stuff, that can only reach as far as like the planetary system that you're in. You're going to see that we're going to have like a tile grid be our map quote-unquote. So, uh, long-range communication is only within that hex, which is not very far. You have to, like, courier things to other planets if you want to get a message to them quickly. Uh, short-range communication, like I said, it's com beads, and they have, like, a, like a 1,000-kilometer range or something. I, I forget exactly what it is. I'd have to look it up in the book. It's listed under com bead, though. Uh, cloaking and teleportation exist, but they are very rare, very expensive, and closely guarded secrets, except for the factions that use them regularly. The Yasaril, which are the little green men, they use cloaking regularly. Uh, it's innate to their biology, and they've used that knowledge of their biology to uh, help them create uh, cloaking for their ships. Teleportation is native to the Creus, uh, like Jay's faction. They are spectral kind of beings that are sort of out of phase with our reality uh, and they exist in an environmental suit that looks like a suit of armor they're basically ghost armor um, but they have access to wormhole technology so uh, if you see teleportation it's not like a Star Trek it's more like a boom tube like they activate a portal and they walk through it Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can clarify more limitations, I guess, when it sure. becomes important. Uh, there's anti-gravity, um, but it's mostly for, like, making sure you're standing upright on your ship. There's laser beams. There's also, like, like percussive weapons, like held bullet weapons and rockets. But lasers do exist. There's plasma ballistics do. and lasers. Yeah. That's and all plasma, you gotta say. Plasma does exist as well. And plasma. I guess they kind of treat it as burning. So anything that plasma does something. I mean, plasma's hot. It is. If, if it lasts more than a laser, I guess it's like, it, remember, there you go. Uh, there is no food replication. Or if there is, it's exceptional. Uh, 
question about that then. So there's no like you can't do instant food replication, but there would be things like a ship maybe having like a a greenhouse type thing. What do they call those things? Hydroponics. Yeah, hydroponics. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I just mean they can't walk up and say tea Earl Grey hot and then it spawns in front. <laughs> but there might be a life support on some <sighs> ships that are like here we here's your potato <laughs> garden, make use of it type thing. Yeah. And okay. a lot of stuff is just kind it. of traded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they're like agriculture is an industry. It hasn't been outmoded. Yeah, absolutely. And um, a hydroponics bay would probably exist on a larger ship. Definitely on a space station, if it's not near. What about a research vessel? Research vessel, I'm sure. Or would have it. Just got kind of Mountain Dew. Just that's that's all you need. To subsist on. Yeah, sorry, we just got out of port, and the only thing they had was flaming hot Mountain Dew. Oh. I don't know how that works. Well, well, I've had that one. That is bolting. It's the only <laughs> Mountain Dew I have never finished. It's okay. Soon Baja <laughs> Blast will be permanent. So. Oh, it's already permanent. <laughs> my uh, IV right now. <sighs> anyway, um, Arf. Do. I'm, I'm going to have to look into this one. I, I've been doing a lot of prep, so some of this stuff I like is kind of left and filter stuff. But I just sent you the email. Cool. Uh, I will read it. Not now. Each hex on our hex grid is going to be one day's worth of faster than light travel. It might end up being longer. It might end up being shorter. But for now, uh, we're going to say that that's what it is. Uh, without faster than light travel, movement between those hexes is effectively impossible. It would take you yeah, from one hex to an have to move faster. Yeah, I mean, probably on the order of like thousands of years. Yeah. But yeah, FTL, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I guess propulsion wise, is everybody using a warp thing or are we just kind of hand waving a ships can do a hyperspeed thing? There is how that works. information on it in the book. Uh, it's, I think, intentionally left vague. Mm -hmm. It will. Yeah, those, the FTL drives do have uh, various speeds, so it's not all the same, and the ranges are different. Uh, mm. But the um, but the FTL is like um, it's not a teleportation, uh, so it's not that. Um, yeah, you do need to physically move through it, so it does take a long time to get from one of the galaxy to the other. But if you can find a wormhole, then you can enter and exit through the wormhole for a much faster travel, obviously. So kind of the way it works is FTL drives is sort of the, the way we say ships can go from here to there and then wormholes get you from far yeah. away to there. So yeah, warm to the yeah oh. anything that allows FTL travel or superluminal travel apparently as um, that is just kind of achieved by achieved differently by different factions. Um, but it will function the same. Some go of them fast. just have different speeds. That seems seems a little... That'll matter when it matters. That'll matter when it matters, Th yeah. That's when you just kind of lure whatever you want to be for whatever situation. Yes. But we'll just yeah. go... FDL drives is the, the sort of catch-all for the ship go fast. The only rules but I assume... that it says are like, uh, you need to be free of a gravity well. You need to be like out of orbit. Black hole. A planet. Fine. Mm -hmm. um, ships can make course corrections, communicate with other ships in formation or at close range... And observe the galaxy around them uh, through gra gravitation. FTL travel requires about five solar astronomical units, then light to exceed the light barrier for most. Okay, that's stupid. Um, that's all we need to know. I don't care about the rest. You have to be outside of a gravitational pull to make it work. Yeah, is the big thing. And you can correspond with places with certain. You can people scan for stuff corruption. while you're traveling. Talk to people that are in the same F caravan. I get the feeling even though you'd be going faster than the speed of light, you'd still have people having to make calculations as you're going because you still don't want to hit I'm you. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine you said it's it takes like a, a day a, anyway. Yeah. I would imagine it's like a warp bubble situation. Like you warp the space around whatever technology that faction has. And if it's a big enough bubble, you can have others. And it takes a day because you constantly have to readjust every time you get to point A to point B. Yeah, you like make a yeah. jump. Yeah, well, it's that that and like, okay, yeah, it's faster than light. So, but like we're still, you know, whatever, going 100 light years. So instead of taking 100 years, it takes a day. Yeah, you do your scan, you go pew. You do your scan, you go pew. 
And you do that for a few hours, and then you're finally at your location. Yeah. I will... I'm guessing there are still more, like, terrestrial stuff, though. Like, there are probably, like, planes and other jazz that doesn't need to do light speed travel. Yes, for, like, local uh, the, the vehicles, the uh, ground vehicles uh, do exist. And, uh, like, non-FTL uh, crafts, like, an inter-atmospheres do exist. Like, uh, fighter... Uh, yeah, I was going to say. Like I imagine it's, it's like Star Wars, where, like, a FTL-capable fighter is, like, mm -hmm. the exception to the rule. Yeah. Man. There are probably people, lots of people floating about in those non-FTL drive things. Just then, that that's a kind. That's just. I mean, you don't need an FTL drive when you're just a truck driver. Just going. I was gonna say, to yeah, like yeah. Probably what's really the case is most people who live in the universe probably don't get out of their system because mm -hmm. they don't really need to. Yeah. This is like people having access to like a fighter jet type thing, almost like level of stuff. Yeah, that's why a lot of the, the items you can purchase have the R next to them strongly restricted, because it's, it ain't for civilians. Unless you got a lot of money or a good reason. Mm-hmm. Or doesn't want me to... F Discord? Now that's in the chat. Um... There's plenty of factions, but uh, only a few are going to be hyper relevant. Um, like there's like a ton, of five different factions. The only three that are going to play huge roles in this are the Nomad, because that's going to be the club, the Federation, Federation of Saul, which is humans on planet Jord. Jord. I'm going to keep doing that. Um, Joe. Joe. The, Jord. And the third faction is the Letnev Barony, uh, who are effectively the blue Romulan. They have blue space elf, uh, like blue skin, white hair, pointy ears. They're elves. And they're racist. They're, they're racist, yeah. Romulan. Well, our, our, our arrogance is so legendary, it's in our genetics. Yeah, they it's have genetic arrogance. <laughs> Lomulans. <laughs> the Smurfulans. Smurfulans. Smurfulons. Uh, the Blomulans from Smurfulon 5. Okay, sure. Uh, uh, they're, oh, uh. They have a dual set of Romulan. planets, uh, Renterra and Arc Primus, I think. Yes. Uh, Renterra is, uh, is a secondary colony. Uh, Arc Primus is the uh, the home world that doesn't have a sun. It's just a giant ice ball. Yeah, I believe they live under the surface. Yes. They are not only space elves, they are space drow. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's about right. They, they packed oh, a now lot I of get them the, into this one. Now I get the genetic arrogance. <laughs> we able to survive in a planet that wasn't supposed to survive. Screw y'all. All right. Um, that's all of the info dumping. Cool. Um, and I, I'll put the factions. In. Uh, as far as this Emin group. I say DM. I shouldn't say DM. this Genesis group. You guys kind of all know my DMing style. Uh, been in my games before. Um, you guys haven't played necessarily with there before, so uh, I also just want to maybe do safety nets for this time around. Um, so I'm just going to send you guys one of them. Uh, you've probably seen them before, floating around the RPG space. But it would be like a like a a sheet that you can check off what things are okay to appear in the camp. Uh, what things can appear by like name or like with a veil, like softly appear, uh, or things that just can never appear. Have you heard of this? Yeah. Yeah. I see what? You make up Sorry, I was pictures of it, okay. but never actually gone through it. Yeah, I'm gonna send a, you a sheet. A survey. Yeah, pretty a survey much. essentially. It's pretty much a survey. Um. That has some little boxes on it, and you yeah, say yes, has... no, maybe, and... Yeah, I'll, I'll explain it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give you each a form to fill out. It has some rough or triggering topics on it, listed by genre or whatever. Uh, you can rate each topic in terms of green light, yellow light, or red light. With green light being, I don't care, it's fine. Uh, yellow light being, it can appear in the campaign, but don't dwell on it or don't go into detail. 
Uh, it's also called like a thing. Yeah, uh, like mention that it happened, but don't make it a quest subject. Yeah, yeah. like if sex happens, say they have sex, we black. That would be a, yep. an example of a fight. Or like this faction takes slaves and tortures. But we're not going to go into detail as to what that entails. They just do it. We just say that to know that they're evil. Basically no gratuity if it's yellow at all. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. red is, do not put this in the campaign at all. Uh, it like I don't want to hear about it. And uh, it, and I'll do my best. Sure it doesn't happen. Um, once you guys fill out this form, you guys can send it back to me. I'm going to create like the worst form of all the, the worst like red things and yellow things and give it back to you guys. It'll be anonymous. And we don't need to like provide reason for anything. Uh but yeah, that, okay. that won't be now. Like in the off time. Okay. I'm just mm -hmm. I'm just imagining in a scenario where it's like say if a bad thing is happening and it just goes to a very bad thing is happening over there. There's no there's no context to it, so we're just like it could be anything on that red list and it's not gonna come up no, ever again. My red list is this. Happiness. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't yeah. want to see it. Really <laughs> hard because that's my ever. character. I'm trying not to do Warhammer, man. <laughs> In the this grim lightness of the universe, um, peace. The only option. The end. Everyone lived happily right. ever after, except Smile. for Slanesh. Ah, uh, so, uh, so you gotta send that in the off time. I'll send that in the off time. Just so we don't need to like have people out or looking at it. Um, while mm -hmm. this is going. If anything, um, this is more noble dark than grim dark. Sure. Yeah. Uh, we're also gonna have like a, a soft X card, um, since we're doing audible stuff like audio only. Um, we can't really like do the X card that's become famous, where somebody can just point at the card with an X on it. And that means we're gonna skip to the next. Um, and. Instead, we can just verbally voice our concerns, or you can send me the gamma text uh, you want us to move on from the uh, But we can say things like, pause, can we step forward, or can this be an X card, or something. Um, if we, if we what install that means, What that means no, sorry, go ahead. is that we will, that the topic uh, at hand is maybe pushing the envelope a little, uh, or maybe it is on the list of like red things and accidentally show up. Those mistakes will happen. Um, if that happens, if no questions asked, we will fast forward or change the topic, or perhaps rewind if necessary. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You get a Batman transition spin. Yeah. Sure. Like, oh, uh, we forgot that, uh, that there's no sex. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, back to <coughs> the tavern. Does somebody? Um. And as far as, so well, that's that's kind of the safety stuff. Um, I think everybody's okay with that. Everybody understands that. Um, another thing that my DMing style, uh, you might think it might not be conducive to a game where everybody has secret agendas and they're working against each other. I'm actually a very open kind of. Uh, as far as DMing style, I'll tell you when something secret is happening. And players might have secret stuff going on, but it's out in the open. Your characters might not know things that players do. Um, so mm -hmm. we're all going to know what everybody's agendas are okay. when we get to that. But we're not necessarily going to know how they get there or the actions they're taking to get there. So somebody might think like, oh, I'm secretly allied with the Mentat Coalition Pirates. Um, and everybody, the players will know that. Not everybody, the characters, know that. But um, if they want to take an action towards that agenda, they might ask the DM to like pull the side or send the DM a note, or something, or maybe I'll take them aside, give them an opportunity for that. So you won't know how they're getting to that agenda conclusion, but you know kind of what it is. We'll just have to, you know. Uh, suspend our disbelief as far as that. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we, it's easier to role play hidden stuff when you know what your character isn't supposed to know. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Then you don't accidentally stumble over it or stuff like that. We, yeah. we all played enough RPGs where we should be decent enough at metagaming to know when, like, information's not, you know, meta type thing. Yeah. And is that, like, okay with everybody? Yeah. yeah. I do have one question. If our character is the type to share the information because they want help, is that fine? Yeah, I know fine. agendas are a big that's thing a in this thing. Just because I that's... take you aside or something doesn't mean that you have to keep that information to yourself. Like, yeah. for instance, like... if I take you aside and give you some information and you're like, oh no, this affects so-and-so, and I actually, I kind of care about so then they might if go your character does yeah it just, it just i guess a lot of the i know a lot of the part of this type of game is about like sort of intrigue and stuff but if your character is like not like that that's fine right <laughs> yeah that's fine okay. yeah, not everybody the, has the, to be in. the the default thing for the whole the uh, what is it agendas is intrigue and mystery but yeah if your character is would rather seek help or inform others based on that I think that's fine. And Just honestly, because you're a politician doesn't mean you have to be a politician. It's basically. <laughs> and honestly, an agenda isn't necessarily like a full nefarious yeah. thing. Yeah. It could be like I'm trying to save up money for my like uh, adopted daughter who lives on this planet, uh, and he needs a better life or whatever. So you're stealing away money, um, like funneling it off to. Like, that could be an agenda. It's not like a political intrigue thing, it's just kind of a secret that you have that forces you to take actions. You... Yeah, and the beauty of that is that, like, if the party knows that that's their agenda, then if a scene comes up where someone stumbles upon them and accidentally figures it out, you don't have to fumble with being surprised and trying to figure it out. You can, like, roleplay it smoothly. And... Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, if characters are just, like, sitting there being quiet and being in the corner, it's like, Oh, be the players know why they're doing. It. Yeah, at least. The very. Uh, I do have a question about these. Since agenda is kind of like the supposedly the hidden thing, like, do we need to reveal the motivations as well? Because the system incorporates that as well. Um, I mean, motivations I think can be semi-public. Like, okay, mostly the motivations of bad guys figure out yeah yeah because because motivations technically have like a direct mechanism link right yeah so like they'll come up organically yep and even so we can probably intuit them from other i think right. we don't need to share our motivations but okay like we can kind of pick up on them if we're acting off of our motivations it's probably something we'll be able to pick up on yeah but <laughs> we'll we'll share our agenda um, okay. Also, Genesis as a game, next kind of topic, Genesis as a game is very narrative compared to d &D. So much more narrative, especially by results, which you guys have experienced in one shot, where sometimes you can succeed, but also have a drawback or have a failure, but also get an advantage on your next thing, um, or help your allies out. So I'm going to try and... Uh, not super enforce, but try to encourage player participation. Like, I want you guys to describe your attacks rather than doing it. Um, I want maybe you guys to, like, participate in the storytelling of the universe. Like, you can add stuff if you want to. Um, like, a description of an environment or a description of a monster. Like, an alien that doesn't exist or something. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know right now, the Genesis book does not have a lot of aliens. Two. Two, two monsters. The rest are here. Yeah, like non... Yeah, right. non sentience Yeah. Yeah. So if there's like a cool monster and you want to invent a of it, be my guest. Uh, if it has a mechanical purpose, then uh, definitely spend a story point on it. Otherwise, I encourage you guys to if you think of something cool. Say, say it out loud, and I'll tell you if it calls. Um, oh, and if we're traveling, try to, like, come up with a, something that your characters do, I guess. Uh, that's just kind of me encouraging you guys to and participate in our shared narrative. Especially since this is uh, a heavily narrative 
mechanical game, but also a uh, a unique setting that there isn't honestly that much information about, because this book is like the most information that they've ever made about Twilight. And like, in a lot of holes. Yeah, well, because it's from a board game. It's from a board game that has like each faction described on the backs, of, like their twenty-four faction sheet. That was like all the information that about this entire unit. Also, because the um, the game was so durative uh, as a board game in terms of like the aesthetics, that uh, they the company didn't have any rights to make any uh, like concrete settings uh, regarding the the game. So it wasn't until this RPG that the anything got like solidified. So yeah, uh, you guys can and. Uh... That's all of my, like, campaign session zero information to give to you. Um, hopefully, it's given you guys a bit of a, bit of a primer to like start thinking about backgrounds and stuff. Um, but for now, I wanted to make, talk with you guys and collaboratively figure out your bonds to each other and your bonds to like the world, then maybe hash out some. Uh, how do you? guys want want to go character by character or do you want to go like uh open forum for bonds between i would like to take a quick break to use the bathroom that is okay too everybody needs to use the bathroom Potty i break. want to make myself a sandwich <laughs> yeah make let's, yourself... let's do a okay. let's do a break bathroom break split break that sounds great And you can read all the bullshit that I sent you. I'm so sorry. Not gonna read it. <laughs> I'll, it's I'll, a lot. I'll read it next. Yeah, no, it's it's a lot. I wrote a significant amount for him, and we've already talked about sort of his general gist. But is there how much should I not share with people? How much should you not share? With people? Um, yeah. I don't think you need. I mean. We'll see. Uh, I think, I think it's fine to share anything. Like I was just scanning my mind for her share mentioned, but I think that okay. knowing that, like secret information, is fine because it's more knowing what happens with, it. and also it's kind of visually. Yes, but he bullshits about it because it's not really clear why he looks different um, and why his coloration is different. So one of the weird, quirky backstories is that he made a joke that it's because he is in the cruise mating period, so his coloration changes. Oh, and <laughs> Sorry, I, have, I have to cut open Kirk's nipples and then wrestle him in and then uh, yeah. now I'm satisfied that was another part of the ritual that I could have done instead of having so <laughs> so he, he made the joke and then it went kind of awry because people took him seriously so he just bullshits so there are multiple rumors about why he's different okay. so yeah well, I think yeah, it'll so at least be visually obvious. I think it's fine to share the pseudo narrative, meta narrative. Okay. What, what color are you again? Like you say, is the color um, different? It's kind of crimson. So, no, no, he's not. He's... Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's very sus. I love all the colors, but you can't be he's, red. He's not. So the suit um, is kind of like, it's like this dark tarnished metal um, with like blue gold and like golden accents. So it looks like instead of pristine metal suits that most crews have, it looks like his has endured some damage um, or it's endured, it has a patina to it. Um, and the sort of veil is, which I'm sort of, because it's pretty, um, is the, uh, what you might call it, like the stealth mesh. So it's the covert armor and skin that gives him stealthy bonuses. Mm -hmm. um, 
that's kind of like a pretty rainbow iridescent when it's not engaged. So he has oh. some pinks and some purples and some teals and blues. It's like a sunset. Oh. Well, sorry for noticing. You said all the things I like. He's a pretty boy. I, I'm back. I'm back. Are we? That's probably yep. not a good question to ask. No. <laughs> I'm leaving for my sandwich. Yes. All right. Anyone who's not here, speak up. <laughs> right. Everyone who is not here, raise your hand. Wait, it doesn't matter. Anyway. Everyone who is oh, still alive, <laughs> you know, sorry. All right, off. I'm back. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Uh, Jay just left. Um, it's fine, though. Okay. I think most of us are. Um, I did want to ask a question since most of us are here, too. Because I wanted to do, like, the voice mod to have more robotic voice. Will that be annoying if it's just for, like, in-character talk? Um, I think if it's just for in-character talk, fine. You can also, like, third-person it. Don't want to have it on right. for specific. Yeah, I was going to say, the only thing that I've noticed each time you've used it is you may want to... Uh, practice your timing of switching it on, turning yeah. on push to talk, and then speaking mm -hmm. so that the first part doesn't get crunched and cut off. It needs a moment for it to solidify the the voice change. So uh, mm -hmm. when you do the voice change, it um, cuts off the first few things that you say um, until it's like set. You'll see it like loading almost. Mm -hmm. uh, like it does a little spinny ring around the, the icon. That needs to be solid before uh, you can talk. So you well, need to push it and then delay, essentially. Yeah. Well, if the, the, what's we call it, um, the voice mod is running, so if that be set on its side, then yeah, do the push to talk and then wait. But I can also have it like, so basically I'll be like this, where it's going to be green, but I'm not saying anything, just to wait, so that way it doesn't create any problems. Yeah, and like maybe if it needs voice to trigger it to start working, it could even thematically be like whenever your character talks, they go, and then they start talking mm -hmm. for just like a half a second. That's clever. Revving up those little, engines. Little yeah. beep boops. Yeah. Revving up those vocal cords. I have the voice changer as well, but I probably won't use it super often unless there's like maybe one character that needs it per session. Mm -hmm. Um do a, a silly voice Deny instead. the Mahawked Gene Sorcerer. <laughs> yeah, if, if there's a Mahawked Gene Sorcerer, you can bet I'm using the voice mod. <laughs> Maybe the vo the, the Nomad too. Um, but that's about it. Nomad needs a voice changer. Oh He's yeah. A mysterious Nomad, ha Nomad has the Bane voice for sure. Ah, yes. <laughs> I like to imagine no the Nomad remember. constantly changes their voice so that no one knows who they are. It, they definitely have, in my headcanon a voice scrambler so that you can't tell like anything mm. about their identity even like gender For or sure. anything your oral we will need it um so that was one thing that I kind of uh, delayed as well uh the main hub uh and I can put this information in that. um the main hub is the orbital space dock Sumerian that is the ring-shaped space station surrounding the planet where you guys uh, have your hub world. The hub world is called Planet Arcturus, which Arctur for Arctic. It's an icy wasteland. Uh, there are some smugglers that hide out down there and beasts, but otherwise there's nothing really of value down there um, except hiding away uh, people that are trying to find you. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, starting off with The Mandalorian, season one, I see. So, hey, hey, just be glad it's, it's, it's not the thing. The Arctic Wasteland. No, no, no don't say creatures. that. We're going to start with fucking endgame bullshit, episode two. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of us has had an alien from the beginning the entire time. I'll put this in the chat. Start all with, like, is, is that thing basically Elder Tour at this point? I, I mean, it still is because you don't know what it is. That's kind of right. what I mean. Like, does it, even though people don't think of it that way, like, isn't it technically because its whole thing was also the paranoia aspect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just uh, not cosmic. That's like the only thing. Yeah, I, mean. I guess that's true. That's the difference. Yeah, I forget what like the the niche uh, definition differences are between horror and terror, thriller and stuff. There are some. 
It's just words. I don't know. Someone broke it down like, um, like, like horror is seeing something terrifying and running. Terror is like not knowing what's going on. Like it's a paranoia kind of fear. I don't know. The thriller is let's fucking fight back. Loads <laughs> shotgun. <laughs> so, so for character bonds, maybe if I, maybe I can just start with Nolly because she's kind of a little bit blank, blank slatey. So if anyone wants to jump on as having a bond with her, that might help with their stuff. Yeah, there. sure. What hmm. was, um, okay. you can have a weird cruise friend. Yeah, maybe. So, so Nolly's thing is she is, uh, she is a human. She is 17. She has like very short cropped hair, thin build. Um, she dresses in like baggy do uh, like space docker clothes kind of a thing. Aww. And her whole thing is she is more or less totally amnesiac. She doesn't really know where she's from. She has no memory of like a family or anything. She showed up on the station pilot, having piloted and sort of crashed into one of the landing bays, a like one person shuttle that is not hers, clearly stolen. Um, but she has no memory of even getting in it or anything like that. I My thought was like maybe some like group of doctors took her in on the station and um, started trying to like maybe figure out who she was and all this stuff. The thing that's weird is she exhibits aptitude for things she should have no knowledge about at all. Like, if you put her in the cockpit of a ship and point to anything on the panel and ask, what is this? She would shrug her shoulders and doesn't really know what it is. But if you tell her to trim up the engines and begin programming flight patterns, her hands just immediately start moving on the controls and she operates oh. and tunes everything. And she can't explain why she knows it. She just understands it. Muscle memory. And she, hmm. and she expresses, she has similar things about, like, reading people and knowing their intentions. She can't know why she knows that that guy's lying, but he's lying. It just seems obvious to her. She's got born style stuff going on. Yeah, she's got born, born disease. Born yeah. disease. Christ is fucking Jason. I born. reckon, <laughs> can I ask, does she have anything red on her? Like a, like a, a Jay patch? Jay has read the same book, I think, that you... Oh, okay. <laughs> is this <laughs> a Hell's one? Because she's Nona, or she was inspired by Nona. Oh, X. <laughs> right? right? <laughs> I wasn't sure if Jay had read the same book. I, I... have read Nona, yes. Yes, yeah. I shot so that she... in the dark, but that seemed like something Excellent. you would have read. It was, it's, yeah. it's not the same thing, but that's where I got the idea. Was like, no, oh, how fun no, would it's, it be to that's have a, a... definitely a good seed so, for yeah, so that's, that. So you know, so she's, she's very bright-eyed, full of wonderment. She doesn't know what anything is, so everything is very exciting and interesting to her. And... Uh, yeah, basically that. It's, She's very happy-go-lucky. Seems like... So, Sin is very much like a puppy dog and is has the same sort of, like, curiosity and optimism about him. Um, mm -hmm. So that makes complete sense. Um, also, Sin, he had Compulsive, he likes the color red and he collects red things. So mm. if she has a red uniform or a red patch on her, she he has, probably she has red hair. She has red hair. Okay, has, that's like, hyperfixation. Short cropped hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so probably she was walking down a pathway one day and just noticed this six, nearly seven foot tall cruise, like following and watching fixatedly and. Maybe she decided to make a friend. <laughs> or, yeah, or what, what about this? Because, you know, she's so naive, people try and take advantage of her. This Krius had been following and, you know, trying to see her, and then she got into some trouble with some people on the station, and the Krius stepped in to help her. Absolutely. And that so now they're just would friends. be a very sin thing to do. <laughs> Perfect. Love it. Excellent. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> I, I, um, I'm a medic, so I could probably be linked through that too. Cause, yeah, because my kind of idea was um, a bit of a tragic backstory type character where they were on like a. I'm trying to figure out what kind of like exact details, but like research vessel things went south. They basically had to do a whole camp out by themselves, no communication thing for like an extended period of time, and only kind of just recently got reintegrated back into the station. So like they're trying to earn their money back to get wherever they want to go, and they've been helping out on the med bay probably. Um, but that left a big impact being all isolated for that long. Um, and so they probably could have seen your person come in, felt a very particular way since you have amnesia, because does that mean you don't really remember any bonds with anybody right now? 
or anything? Yeah, basically that's it. She she has no idea of anything that happened to her prior to arriving on the station. Yeah. Yeah. So they they take an interest in you almost immediately, kind of like seeing a sort of similar sort of scenario of just like everybody I knew is gone. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, right. Some mixture of empathy, but also maybe scientific curiosity. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Is anyone an engineer specifically in this group? Um, I think I have mechanics as a skill. Yeah, I'm not an engineer, but I have mechanics and not. Oh, yeah. The other thing is Nolly has um, and you'll like this, Jay. Nolly has a uh, mech mechanics skill familiar because of being a wayfinder. Oh my god. Um, so the so it's, so it's a little <laughs> droid that she can help her do mechanics checks. And it's is it named, a, like a dog? Oh my it's, god, yes. It's, it's, it's code named as ND13, and she calls it Noodle. Oh my god, perfect. Oh, but, okay. So I, that's, you did a, good. that's that's unnecessary information for Chris's question. Unfortunately, she is not a mechanic, even though I have <laughs> for an engineer. Even so so I do don't wreck the ship. Is what you guys are saying? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Fair. I'm sure that um, somebody will pick up the slack. I I have what for mechanic. What are the necessary skills? Because like I have mechanic operating medicine at field operator. So that was kind of the idea was that they were able to survive on something they weren't supposed to survive on anyway. So they could probably pick up slack if needed. I mean, you, you have enough intelligence that you can probably also uh, Sarg is like like racially like native. Yeah, I can fix boxes. things. Mm. So mechanics you'll be, like, default. Mechanics is a good one. Um, maybe operating. Though operating is for like operating a big ship. Yeah, uh, you have but... that, and I also have computers. Also, do you have more computers? Science? Is good. Uh, you have lore, lore science. Yeah, I, I have lore good. science, so yeah, I could. You could, I could serve do as that. an engineer. I could serve as an engineer as well. That's fine. So, fine. so what he is is this. You know when people say like uh, you're a doctor and they just automatically assume that you, he just knows how to fix people. It's just like you're smart. You went you went to MIT. You can, you can fix a car. Right? I, I was just able to use the ship's hydrophonics to survive, and I was able to treat my wounds. You probably you take the same um, sort of tactic of, uh, or, or like, frame of thinking of, like, the body's just a machine. Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting, yeah, a doctor who treats all, who basically does not have a bedside manner. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's like, what? Oh no, it's broken, I'm gonna fix you up. What nice. is, yeah, but like... You can tell me I'll be better. I have no idea if you're going to be better. I'm just going to fix it. Oh, I'm going to see if this works. Um, it's kind of jerry-rigged, this thing, but uh, it'll be useful if you live. What? Here we go. <laughs> I think it should be flowing properly. You're talking about my blood? Yes, I'm talking about your blood. <laughs> yeah, well, there's your problem. All your blood's outside your body. Archimedes, get out of there. <laughs> it's fizzy in there. Nice. Uh, cool. So you guys could have some sort of bond here. That's that's more potential seed. As far as like robots are concerned, so what's your character like, Allie? I was going to be a medic. I was literally just going to be. You are all my pets, and I am going to be your veterinarian to make sure you don't die because I don't that's understand so carbon-based nice. life forms. Okay, so we we have like two uh, engineers, which is good. It's not a bad thing. Or not engineers. No, I'm uh, a shepherd medics. though. Yeah, yeah okay. medics. Okay, you're a shepherd. That's a different yeah. profession altogether. Yeah, it's like you're a defender. Yeah. Tank man. He protect. He protect. It's li literally whole job is he protect. Okay. Um. Hmm. I mean, how, how would are you, you like? What to... are your other skills actually? Because you you totally could be a combat medic. There's a little distinction there. So the. The inspiration I was trying to think of was sort of like um, K2. And it's like, the the original idea was like there was a possibility of um, the Kriyu still having like primitive um, codes that run through all of the uh, Titans because of like the lore from like the books say that the Titans were created by the Kriyu and so then basically planted so they could take over once the they had come back. I'm sorry, Mahawked. Um, thought it was the Kreeus for some reason, because I thought it was supposed to be like some dimensional alien beings, and they're like, here's some titans that take over the planets. No, nah, the, uh, so the deep lore, which you would be aware of at least, or at least somewhat cognizant of, the titans uh, were beings that were engineered by the Mahawked to awaken once the Mahawked returned. 
which happens during the Asheron. But through generations of the Titans constantly remaking themselves, there was a point where they actually kind of just gained sentience yeah. and some of them started awoke early. Their... Some of them yeah. gained freedom from the Mahawks genetic control um, and just kind of formed their own civilization willy nilly started going around trying to wake up the other sleep. Right. Yeah. So oh. my initial thought was like, okay, maybe it's something that's like an old program that it no longer, it couldn't be like deleted, but it's been overwritten. But there's always like some weird fear within the silicate base, like life forms that it could be like all that work they had done to like gain their will, gain their community, gain like this lifestyle could be undone. So they live kind of like hedonistically but since they're silicate, they're, they're going to live very differently than carbon-based life forms. So I was trying to think of a character that would sort of try to step out of that world and be like, I would like to use the skills and everything that I've learned in comparison and start to apply that to other beings. Because Titans sound like they're very sort of like isolated to each other. Like they don't involve themselves with like other like species. They just stick to their... They eat fucking rocks and stay at home. <laughs> So yeah. you know, sort of curiosity. God, I wish that was me. <laughs> Just chewing on some, like, you know, metal. If anything, yeah, so, their so highest like... concentration is probably their home planet, but otherwise, they're probably few and far between. Yeah. So, the idea of it being sort of, like, either a rebellion against, like, literally, like, um, oh, what would you call <clears throat> Programming? I was no, gonna say, like... yeah, like, it, like, it could even be as simple as, like, the the latent programming that's dormant in them that tells them to annihilate organic life forms that's waiting to be triggered by the Mahakt, like got corrupted because they got whacked on, like do an Iron Giant thing, like they got whacked yeah. on the head. And instead now it wants to preserve organics. Could be that. It could also be, um, I was trying to think of the word, like when something is so far-fetched, like it doesn't exist anymore, but it's just like a fear that people have. So in, they'll act... Yeah. I, maybe Do you mean I like, a, like a genetic fear? Yeah. We're talking just phobias in general because like it's it's irrational fear Instinct. in general. Sure. I, I was thinking like the idea because of the, that had existed, it was known that there are unique individuals that try to work against it, even if it doesn't actually function anymore. That kind of thing. This is constantly working in opposition. Yeah, so you have a stake in the events that have happened in the past decades because you don't like the Mahawk returning and you don't like a like a computer-based life form trying to take over too. Both of those are probably like ringing a ringing something with you. Mm. Um, but also, you're all squishy and you can die easier. That's fair. This is true. <laughs> what well, do you I, think I have a question. The cruise, yeah. I have a question, though, for Ali's character. Why are you on the Nomad Station? Easy access to multiple species. Okay. Um, so I have another thing for that. The scenario that I was kind of workshopping, um, some of you are already on the space station, and some of you are just arriving. So you can choose either option. Um, okay, well, that... The so place it's... where you're arriving from was probably going to be Primor, which is right next to a wormhole, so it's just a trade hub. Um, so you could be from anywhere, essentially. But you're going I here feel like, for a reason. I feel like I would have already been on the no bad ship. Yeah, that's fine. Ship? Station. Okay. Sorry, station, yeah. Yeah, it's like an orbital uh, ring around the ice planet. Mm -hmm. Stationed on a station. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm just uh, allowing that to be a thing that you guys can consider for your characters. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, that's another kind of thing. Um, I'm hoping during this uh, time that we're here to find reasons, not only for you to maybe know each other or at least care about each other once you've uh, you've gotten to know each other, but reasons to like travel uh, together and like go on missions together. Um, I was going to offer you guys like a job to get the thing started, but. The reason that you stick together uh, should hopefully be a good one. Maybe yeah. you independently have reasons to adventure together. But I know that you guys, or at least uh, when we decided it was going to be a nomad adventure, um, that you guys were going to be like either smugglers or merchants on the same ship together. So why would you want to do 
Hmm. I have to keep the smugglers alive to make the job work. In my yeah, case, so it's for the I got found out really early, so I'm kind of like s stuck doing the bidding. Um, I was in there, f like, um, I'm kind of in here as an unofficial spy for the Lednev government, and then the it's like, hey, uh, we know you work for the Lednev, uh, but uh, we don't care. Uh, here, have some uh, station access code so you can uh, freely dock from the uh, from the station. By the way, your ship's over there as well, and uh, be prepared to meet your crew. Uh, bye. And it's like, okay, I guess that's the plan now. And that's where my character is at. It's supposed so, to be a spy, but only, instead they're like, well, you're going to go to work then if you're going to be sticking around. Look, I'm part refugee, part spy. It's like, I'm only spying because, like, imagine, like, a Russian being a spy because, like, like they're going to America anyway. Might as well spy. Like, that mm. kind of, like, deal. So, okay. I guess, what was your career and what was your race name again? Sorry, I don't think I wrote it down. Uh, Lednev. Right. It's the, the, the arrogant space elves. Um... So my career is the captain because the um, uh, because no one else picked it. <laughs> also because the uh, um, my background is that I come from a military background, um, and due to the turmoil at home, uh, I was nearly um, assassinated. And to keep the heat down, um, and to basically give the rest of my family some room to uh, find things out and politically maneuver, I was essentially like pseudo exiled um to the other end like like if anything happens to me the lednet government will like disown me basically like so they don't you, hold any responsibility for what happens to me so you does your character have like ambition to just kind of do well on the nomad to get more information and possibly bring something back like would that be well, enough motivation to be working with whoever type thing the, the motivation is that the nomad is the, the relatively new "Quote unquote superpower in the uh, the region, so it is worth keeping an eye out uh, as a military personnel. And secondly, um, there are rumors regarding the Nomad ship. Uh, so Lednev's entire military shtick is that the they're kind of like the Spanish Armada, like they hold the biggest fleet in the galaxy. That is their shtick. So whenever like a new space empire kind of like encroaches upon their border, they're they're very wary of that. So, I'm sort of here to basically keep an eye out on various, like, uh, keep a news out for various uh, Empire's uh, fleet movements, and also to basically find out what I can for my home government. Um, I am wearing my army uniform because because I got found out so uh, easily that I'm like, eh, screw subterfuge. I'm just going to use my uh, Lead of Authority. But the, the, what you guys don't know is that the... I, kind of don't have that much authority um i was technically a commander but mostly because my entire unit got wiped out except for me twice so oh, i've been like no. given oh, no. to twice but um also my, i'm wearing an army uniform not a naval uniform um, you're you're kind of vaguely like emperor's new clothes like you have this like I'm so cocky and arrogant. I'm doing all of these things, and I have all of this support. When really, you're just kind Ryan of no one Benson. wants you. <laughs> yes. So I, I was good. I was gonna say I have a question. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounded like what you said was like you came to the Nomad to try and spy, and then the Nomad organization immediately found you out. But it was like, yeah, we know you came to spy. We found you out so easily that, like, if. Like, we don't think you would ever possibly actually steal anything from us. So you're just, you get a free pass for now. But we've got our eye on you. Is that also kind the, of correct? Uh, also, the, the the word was like, oh, yes, we would love uh, additional cooperation with the Lednev as well. It's like, like they're kind of like mm. uh, twisting but, my arm as well. So they, like, so they almost overestimate you too a little bit. Like you're being no, uh, Like they, they basically know enough about me that okay. I think they... My character thinks they have an accurate assessment of me in every way possible. Like, okay. um, only thing they haven't revealed their hand is whether they know my personal like home life. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I wrote a pretty detailed. For once, I actually wrote a pretty detailed thing for Chris. Um, but uh, I don't know if the they know about that detail. Yeah. But uh, they could because it's a freaking nomad. So, like, oh no, sorry. Go ahead, Dan. No, oh, you can go first. I was going to say, so it's like you believe, and it's probably true, that they've absolutely read you like a book, but it's weird that they're letting you off easy and not really doing anything about it. 
is Garrick. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> oh my god. So you're what a spy. Is, what is this reference? Uh, that's a deep, from space space reference. deep Space Nine. It's from Deep Space Nine. He's the one Cardassian left on he's the. He's a tailor. Uh, on the ship, and it's very obvious to everyone involved that he's a spy. Uh, so they kind of just treat him as like, uh, okay, um, we're gonna be careful what we say around you. We're not gonna really trust anything that you say, or whatever. Uh, also, you're vaguely like an antagonist in general for everyone on the ship. But you live here and you work here, and uh, I can get my my genes done here. <laughs> it's, it could also be a, well, we know about this one, so let's keep them around so they don't send anyone else. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so, I was going to say, if if either... Sorry, I keep interrupting you, Dan. Go ahead. Um, so I was just kind of like saying, so motivation-wise, because the, the point we were trying to do is like make people tethered sort of like to a scenario. Mm -hmm. But you your, your character seems like they're pretty much fine with taking almost any nomad mission because they just want to... Both keep a low profile, but also possibly get some more prestige and experience. Basically, so they can, my like... tie to all of you is everyone died twice. I'm not going to let it happen for the third time. Also, like uh, it generally shows uh, like a uh, bad level of incompetence to allow your uh, wards to die for the third time in a row. So it's a so professional thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a very professional thing. Like Taranga Leela, whenever she gets put in charge of shit. Unless it's Fry, then Fry goes into airlock. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, speaking of people who are, who like the three of us who might already be on the station, if either your character, Dan, or um, Sin might have an interest in spying on the Letnev or anything, like, like if there would be a sort of, you know, uh, I, the scene I'm imagining is both are shaking hands and each one thinks they're getting the better of the other one. Yeah. If any, if there's anything like that, Nolly would just go along with it because she would be like, "Ooh, this is a new friend. This is great. I love yeah, having a bigger um, family." Now, also like the the units that got uh, wiped out uh, is from um, the the remnants of the Yordian uh, bo um, border forces. So mm. when I say like I'm my character is really racist, it's mostly against humans. Mm. Yeah, the let now. Guess what? <laughs> Your character uniform is red. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Motivation. That's, nice. That's all it takes. Okay. I was like, oh, what what do we got? The Letnev and the humans, the Yordians, are they actively hate each other. They are the sole reason that the Lazax are no longer alive anymore. Well, not in their current state. Also why uh, uh the, the turtle people lost half of their homeworld. What is your character's full name, and could you type that out on in the chat? Oh so yeah, that would be super helpful. Um, also, if you could maybe update your character sheets. I just gave you guys some tokens uh, and mm. tied them to your character sheets. It should update the name if you update the name in the character. I'm not sure if you have to do it from the like overview or actually in the character sheet, but I would do both. Uh, but you can also just put notes or chat for the chat or the notes yeah. there's stream means going on there's also the, the name the other even longer on. but i'm just like okay i won't torture you guys it'll just fit yeah. under one line of text <laughs> there we go i was gonna say this is fine because nolly doesn't know what a letnev is so it's fine yeah, yeah. she's gonna see you be like person whoa you're blue that's cool and I'm also like because uh, I've been through two campaigns of uh, uh, combat. Like I'm like probably the oldest character next to the uh, Titan. It's mm. just it's just like it's like mm, Yordian child. It's like I should not I shouldn't um, I shouldn't be so uptight near a child. But at the same time, it's a Yordian child. You can't yeah. trust a Yordian child. Just like looking, looking down your nose at her. Hmm, I'm sure I have a pair of keys somewhere I can give her to keep her busy. Yeah. Question, because you said age compared to a titan. I'm a baby. Oh, oh, they're like two years old. Uh, I don't know what the comparison is, but basically well, titans continue growing. Their planet but is yeah. a titan. But remember, uh, with like the things, is it like um, you have all your you're fully matured? I'll, I'll, I'll say like uh, right, yeah, yeah. So, Question: Did I you think... awake? Did you awaken during the Asheron disaster or prior to it? 
uh, Which means, post? did you wake up because the Mahakt appeared, or did you wake up by accident? I feel like accident would be fun. Okay, so you could be older than five years old. Okay. <laughs> you could be older than five. Well, the, the whole thing is that... <laughs> you could also be younger growing. than five, sure. It's uh, But you'd be like a new titan. Where are put people putting their names, by the way? Uh, the well, just in your character sheet journal. I do. I think. Yara Umar? Yeah, you? there we go. Mm-hmm. Might just need... It should be on their character, so you could have to change it there. Oh, I guess the nameplate doesn't update. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why I was like... The nameplate is separate. Yeah. So, you would... Say if you click on the character, and then you go to open character sheet. I just changed. At the very, very, very top, there's like two buttons on the right-hand side. One looks like a magnifying glass, and the other one says edit. That is where you would edit the token, specifically. Yeah. Interesting. How do you edit your bottom icon? bottom icon. The bottom icon? So if there is a character that's already been produced, if you look at the bottom of the chat, there is a tiny little drop-down menu underneath the chat box that says as blank blank, you know, whatever's there. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, I could be as Ally Briggs R, and it pops up my, like, little icon. Or I can do as Frankie, where'd you go? As... I can't even update mine for some reason. I see it. Oh, I got it. Ooh, yeah. I got it. It should yes. just be in there, yeah. So yes. it'll tie it to the character sheet hmm. and whatever image you have attached to the character sheet. Okay, I, I, I think I just... Uh, a shame. I, I, I just justify the key. Yeah. I have a question um, for somebody that's not omnipotent like the DM. Um, so Shane, can you double... Shift double... Can you just double click on the... Uh, on your token that's out there. Yeah. Okay. Do you see a button that says update default token? Uh open character sheet. No. Okay. Okay, I see what you my Ellie. Thank you for Yeah. Um so it's up to me to update your default token. Fine. should be able to change your name you should be able to once everybody changes can, their name yeah once everybody changes their names on their tokens um then i'll i'll click the button that updates your default token so that can be on our own time as well i also just have one request of specifically dan can you get a discord icon and an avatar <laughs> oh yeah i could do that doesn't matter what the image is. I just uh, want to see if this Discord thingy will work. Because right now... Oh, is it like an overlay? It's an overlay thing. Um, Do you know the dimensions of Discord? Oh, I don't I don't know. You don't just automatically correct itself, but it needs... Square. It, it wants a square image, yeah. Yeah. And I think it wants it square because sometimes it can zoom out into like a square, but it's normally a circle. Yep. But um, the overlay that I'm using is supposed to, like, glow when you talk. Um, but your oh. icon is blank. I think it might be screwing with it. Okay. I, I noticed it a while ago, but I haven't really... Like, I didn't think it was a priority to, to try and fix it. But that's fine. Uh, while you're doing that... Oh, I see. Yeah, I just turned on Twitch so I can yeah. see what you're looking at. Yeah. It's, it's an annoying setup because this thing only allows me to change your avatars and stuff while you guys are in a voice chat with me. <laughs> so at some point I might ask you guys to come in so I can like change it to your tokens once I have tokens for you guys that aren't default tokens that I found. You got it. Look, so I know you don't like the picture of my Titan, anything. but I gave you one. The, uh, yeah, I know. But I just gave you generic ones for now because I didn't that one. <laughs> it's fine, you'll see. It's, it's been ten years since I drew anything. It's gonna take me a while to get the character portrait. Yeah, out. I, I gotta learn how to draw. Okay, um, if From you give start. me a description as well, I need to start drawing things. So uh, I will I will draw some portraits for you. If you want me to? I also don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs>
But if you have a drawing as well, you can just send it to me. Use the uh, either one of the images that I've already provided because they're like the primary reference images. Once I have like an actual character sheet, like turnaround for Sin, I'll send that your way. Mm. Turnaround? Oh yeah. Fancy. Because he's my weird little goblin boy. A glittery iridescent goblin boy. It's your new Blorbo, yeah. I get it. He's my Blorbo. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we're still, we're still kind of doing bonds. Um, uh, Shane, Shane, what's, Shane, what's your character? What? Shane brooding in the corner. Get out of the corner. <laughs> Shane's like, oh no. C put four words in his name. All right. I got to think of a fifth. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> Fucking birds. Hey, bird. There is Get out of the a criteria of naming convention it's true These guys they have more behind <laughs> every think. aspect of their name and their yeah, name so my... does have to be extremely long yeah and it's gonna get longer i assume it's like a uh, personal name uh, followed by uh name of my mentor followed by name of a deed that i've done followed by name of another deed i've done <laughs> ad nauseum so the character name is nothing, 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 nothing. <laughs> it's it, fuck. What do we say? Tanuk and Jalad at Tanagra or whatever it was. Yeah. Tanuk and yeah. Tanuk and Jalad. Uh, uh, Shaksa when the walls fell. Yeah. Shaka Shaka when, when the... Shaka when the walls <laughs> fell. Mm. Troy NFT Barnes bro, entering with gone. pizza. The room is on fire. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio Please. raising glass Garnished. and pointing at screen. <laughs> And if it uh, if it wasn't obvious, uh, hopefully this will have DS9 vibes to it eventually. Yeah, we need a. Rizier just turns into a quark character. Yeah, we need a quark. We need a quark. We need an Odo. <laughs> That's no, all. No, the, 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 we, the true DMPC we need. We need Morn. <laughs> oh sure. We need because Morn is the best character apparently. Yeah, I had no idea that his. Uh, actor was from Cheers. So you told me. <laughs> yeah, Norm. Hey, Norm. Um. So, Shane. Oh. Who do you have yeah. bonds with? I know that you have a lore thing that I, I mentioned to you yesterday. If you need, yeah, a, I read it. Do you read as it as well? I did. I did homework. Yeah. So they, yeah. the Argent Flight. Not the Sheikrai, but the Argent Flight, which is a right. faction of the Sheikrai. Um, they were tasked uh, 3,000 years ago by the Lazax, the original Twilight Emperors of the Imperium. Um, they were tasked with making sure the Mahakt never get out of their dimension ever again. And then they did. Our homeworlds were near it. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, Oopsie. So now... At least the Argent Flight. I don't know if you're part of the Argent Flight, but either way, the Argent Flight is demanding that the Shikrai band together and that the galaxy band together to uh, to destroy the Mahat. That's their premise. And right. Their duty. I, I think I do want to tie into that, as in, like, I do want the Mahat to be taken care of and contained and eliminated, essentially. Mm -hmm. But I don't trust the Argent Flight to do it. Because they're all too gung ho, diplomatic about it, I guess. Like oh, no you're one's doing the Clint Eastwood style. You think yeah, that the... you could do a better job than them? It's it's not even that I think that I would do a better job. I mean, I probably do, but I just think they're not taking action because everybody wants to be like the lead in charge, doing it, and they want to do it like in this like you know, their set ways where I just want to get it done. Like, just get in, get out, do what needs to be done, where everyone else has the bureaucratic nonsense they need to, are trying mm. to go through, I think You're is what... you cannon cop who doesn't play by the rules. Yeah. It sounds like that. You kind of sound like a vigilante, because the entire Sheikrai, like, um, identity is very communal. They all want right. to be together because they all train together they train to be uh just as effective as 
as another she cry. Um, the example that they give is like if uh, a captain has to step down, the ne person next to them can just take over and they have all the skills necessary ready. Uh, and reading through their bio is very like, oh, they're birds. Oh, they're birds. Oh yeah, they have flocks. <laughs> yep. Okay. Because this is the this is the fact that they're traveling in a V shape, but then when the one in front gets tired, the other one takes over and moves into the front <laughs> of the V shape. Oh my god. Also, their space it's... navy is mostly uh, fighters for obvious reasons. And of... their uh, home planet is a group of three planets uh, inside of a nebula that happens to have oxygen, so they can just fly from planet to planet if yeah, they like, wanted to. <laughs> but. Basically, I want to be a part of them. Like, I'll say, like, I served and trained with them for, like, years or so. But then I left because I was like, I think my character wants to be more of a specialist at, like, the thing he wants to do and be good at. Like, you know, like a trail stalker, sniper in that way. Whereas the Argent Flight, she cry are trained to, you're all going to be good at everything. Yeah, you're all So generalists. that if someone... Right, you're all generalists, where I don't want to be pigeon, quote unquote, pigeonholed <laughs> into <Wow. laughs> into one thing. I want, or you're, you're cramping my style. I don't want to be pigeonholed into everything as a generalist. I want to be good at the thing I know I'm good at. It's kind of you want to be pigeonholed one thing. I do want to be pigeon. You yes. want to be allowed to pigeonhole. Yes. I want to be a pigeon. I want to no, nest. No one would dump that. I want to be a, a tunnel nester instead of a, a ground nester. So maybe you came to the Nomad because you think that they're, yeah, or like the Nomad has the resources right. to like accomplish yeah. what you need. You might That's even what be, I was thinking. you might even be arriving on the ship um, because you just heard about the Nomad, nomad and maybe, maybe recently came to this decision that uh, the flock is not helping you. You need to seek out a solution that they can't seek out democratically or diplomatically because they're going to the Galactic Council and like getting six extra votes <laughs> for their ability yeah. um, to, to try and unite the <laughs> Imperium against uh, the Mahakt but you are like that's not going to be a solution we don't need everybody we just need like some clever solution like some polarity we can reverse and it'll, it'll get rid of them or maybe an elite task force I just need to find a group of people or the war right. help, the nomad, to do it. help the nomad until he gives me the information that I need because he knows something must it may not be the cleanest solution but it'll be the most strategically smart move yeah I, I kind of had an overarching idea because I was trying to figure out what my knowledge motivation was and I kind of originally wanted the warp tech but you had mentioned how communication across the galaxy or system is limited right but what if there was a way to link everybody so that you'd have, you know, communication makes military might like so much better? Like, what okay, if there was a way to Comcast. Yeah, basically, that would be kind of a sort of aligned goals type thing. I kind of want to see if there's a way for the nomads tech to to do that since tech is kind of all over the place right now. Hmm. And I had this idea that since she was isolated for so long, she only happened to be like caught by somebody's like, you know, standing on a sensor. So she's just like, this would have been, like, uh, not a problem if, you know, everybody could kind of, like, ping people more easily. If there weren't, like, so many blank spaces in the universe. So, like, uh, well, um, change your character, like, mm -hmm. uh, so, like, you're with the Nomad, like, so are you kind of going as, like, an outsider striking up the crew, or are you going to have, like, uh, on, on station friends with anyone um I think I'll probably be an outsider essentially to everyone for now mm -hmm. yeah I don't like it it sounds like what maybe almost is the case is at least the commander Gerval Brandis comes in and you know he was caught so he's looking to strike up a crew doesn't matter if they're if like bare minimum someone gullible enough to serve under him Ideally, someone skilled scoops up some of the misfits on the station, and then maybe Zaldenrock sees that this is an avenue to like get some stuff done or something. All right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably the route I was going with. 
You want competent people to get your agenda done. Yes. Well, it sucks to be you. <laughs> we we um, are, half the crew is like, we just want to do stuff. The other half is like, we got career goals. Uh, it's so Sin does have like an agenda. Um, he's probably not going to be super open about it, but he does also hate the Mahakt, like in a big major way, and wants to thwart him, thwart them. So if that ever comes up, that is pretty much yeah, we'll, immediate friend. We'll bond. <laughs> exactly. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe well, that's the, the space devils. Everyone hates them. Sure, but some people hate them more. <laughs> Maybe that's the maybe that's the way that the the trio on the station gets rolled into the crew. That's entirely possible, actually. It, especially if, I mean, the captain already has read, so Sin is going to be okay. So Sin's whole backstory, because the red, yes, it's like a quirky, funny thing, and he has like a little collection of red trinkets that he's stolen throughout the galaxies and throughout his travels, but also. He's a former rehabilitated Crimson Legionnaire, and it's basically got to catch them all. So he's trying to capture and submit them for study so they can rehabilitate and reverse what the Mahawk did to the crews in order to create the Crimson Legionnaires. So he's kind of a failed experiment, <laughs> kind mm. of. So he's not that great. And he kind of sucks, and he's really weird, so the crews don't want anything to do with him, so they're trying to just <laughs> give him a task. <laughs> oh, no! You're like my character. No one wants me around. Yeah, it, it's... And it's also, like, Sin has other things going on, but it's, like, he's attracted to the color red as a default, but it, like, is connected to his trauma because former Crimson Legionnaire, but also, like, his mission and his goal, which is to, like take care of other Crimson Legionnaires and all those things. So he really fucking hates the Mahakt. Take care, air quotes, as in help them go night-night forever? Or take care, give them big old hug with a knife? Take care... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Sin isn't very good at the whole knifing bit. He's fast. He's not... He's not very... <laughs> He's good at like one thing, <laughs> and that is sneak. He's not very good at anything else. But anyway, that's his whole thing: is that he wants to thwart the Mahakt and get around to as many different places as usual in order to hunt down leads on Crimson Legionnaires. Neat. So yeah, neat. But if Birdman has any red on him or no. anything else, okay, <laughs> shit. Don't reference my token. I do not have red feathers. Okay. I feel like, all right, if you're going to be going out to go and try and, like, find these people to, like, get rid of them, that might be that might be something that my character would also kind of connect with. As in, like, they've you're been experimented time. on and they've been, like, modified to not be themselves, like, controlled and turned. So it's like, okay, maybe I can help oh. them. Oh, yes. No, definitely. Sin will love you. Okay. Shepard has RGB color schemes. Um, uh, red is for angry. So it's not always angry. Red doesn't oh, show cute. up a lot, but I turns red. So is everybody... Like, so, so at least a chunk of everybody has a thing particularly against the Mahat then, right? I don't think my character has anything I mean, like directly the... like against him. It's more of a, I just want to help others. Oh, okay, I thought you were saying Mahat, Mahat right. is essentially Thanos of this. Yeah, game. right. Everyone, yeah, they are. everyone has something against it just from the existential dread level. But it's the personal thing I'm talking about. Yeah. I, so for my character specifically, I, the the thing is more of like it's the boogeyman. I, that's what mm -hmm. I was trying to think of like before. So the, like the idea of like the Titans being programmed for something in fear of maybe that reversal. Like, it's the boogeyman that always kind of moves, motivates them to do better. Mm -hmm. So it's just doing better. It's just doing good things. So not in the sense of going out to try and kill people, but helping others that maybe have been harmed or feel like they have been harmed by the Mahawk. That's cute. Yeah, I like it. You're, I you might be gaining a very long boy scarf. <laughs> 
long boy scarf. Oh, that's because he's tall. He's, he's bendy, so he'll just like wrap <laughs> around your shoulders like a snake and perch. Yeah, I was gonna say when it, when he's like relaxing, he like pops out of his exosuit and just kind of wisps around. If anybody could carry people, it's gonna be my character. <laughs> I am I, great. I very much picture your character just literally saving people by lifting them and moving them when things get bad. Literally, have, all right, you've seen. Have you seen Rogue One? Have you seen when like K two yeah. is like inside of the um, the base trying to pretend to be like a non like a normal droid? He just picks up some troopers and just because he doesn't have a gun, Cassian didn't trust him with a gun, so he throws the troopers at the other troopers. <laughs> yeah. He's just, fucking ragdolls them. It's like, it's great. So, yeah. yeah, Love it. You are being rescued. Do not yes. resist. Yeah, I figured exactly. that's gonna be you. Yeah, the, the, there's even a, a talent for uh, uh, Titans doing this physically called Shepherding Protocol. Yep. Actually yep. Body block people. Um, and I'm also like, it's like size 2 silhouette, I think is how it's defined. So like, big. Yeah, you are basically you tower over people. I mean, I could change my backstory just to make it so maybe I, my state, my like outpost was attacked by the Mahawk and that's why I was isolated for so long. That'd give me motivation to join any mission related to it. True. Yeah. I mean, Sorry, it, just... it was unintentional to have so many Mahawk connections. I, mean, I was going to say, I think it's fine good. to have variety because yeah. Nolly doesn't have a, a Mahawk connection. That she knows of! Also, well, no, yeah, I, I already have. I know. I, I don't know if I want to, I mean, I could, because the thing is like the the actual truth about her it actually is probably not a bad idea if i just reveal it to everyone so that we know going in but it'll probably also maybe just come up pretty early I, I, yeah okay. that is up to you if you want to reveal that or not yeah maybe i don't know when we go to talking about um agendas it might be necessary to reveal it to discuss what her agenda is so, yeah. like if you don't think it's gonna like the reveal is gonna like piss someone off i, I think uh it, it, it'll be just fine to do whatever you want with it yeah. Like, if you think it's something that's like really sensitive that's gonna piss someone out, then you might want to reveal. But if it's not that, then don't worry about it. Yeah, oh, like, it just might... like against like what the goal is for that quest or something. That's the thing. It might just help. Well, we'll wait till we get to discussing agendas and stuff. Yeah. Sure. Oh. Um. But, but sorry. Right. No, it's okay to have variety. So do what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. It was just. I mean, there's other ways suggesting character wise, like um. She's also, I took the timid as the thing, so she could just be literally bullied into joining a mission. Mm. <laughs> you're, you're a bully. That's <laughs> cute. Okay. And what is Yara's race again, so I can, like... Uh, she's the Sar. She's the, 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 the mammal, the carnivorous mammal asteroid people. Okay, hold on. Let me look, out, look it up. Doggos, yeah. right? They're doggos or cattos. I think there's cat people. So like they, more they are yeah. more dog-like. The Hakan yeah. are more cat-like. Yeah. They both kind of have like genetic diversity, so be a fucking poodle if you want. I don't give a shit. If <laughs> yeah, I have no idea a, how I wanted. You could be a tabby cat if you're a Hakan. I don't care. The TI fourth edition. They were like, what did they do to these people? <laughs> They look very. Yeah, some of the art of the SAR is all the SAR the place, so. art yeah. sucks so okay. bad. Yeah, okay. they Chris did them absolutely it. dirty. Chris hates the art so badly that he didn't play them in the tabletop in the board game. Like, that was enough. Even though they're one of the more powerful factions, yeah, they're, they're super fun. Them. Like, they just look too ugly. I mean, stat wise, I chose them because I could get a very generalist stat spread. <laughs> well, that's, that's their thing. Game. They're yeah. like roamers and. Yeah. Adaptable. I have like I have I think I was able to make it so I only have two stats that are two and the rest of them are all three so I'm just like I don't know what I I'll just chill there. Yeah, I did a similar thing with Nolly and it actually worked out really well because one of your uh, powers you get as a human is your adaptable. So once per session you can spend a story point and roll whatever skill you want for another skill. There you go. So yeah. like you can we can do a role play thing where like she just is randomly good at something when I do that ability. There is also, also a later. I think you're about to mention this, C, but uh, there is a later feat that is literally born identity. You yeah. Can, yeah. Like temporarily start taking strain every turn and you like gain an entirely new skill set it's a dominant personality overlay or something yeah yeah some stupid name like that <laughs> it uh, sucks uh, that also, it's like tier four yeah that's the thing yeah it wouldn't happen for a while which may work for nelly but 
I, I for like narrative stuff like it's it's nice to build towards something um, exactly like that you know born identity the like the mental split doesn't get resolved until a while in and you can also like uh, take it slow or fast as you want because uh you can get like tier two talents in like one session if you just put everything into talents but if you're like sprinkling with skills and things like that then mm -hmm. uh, you can take it slow or fast as you want um like the um yeah i think variety is good uh long as it's like i was kind of really worried about like my stuff being confrontational so long as like everyone's cool with that like, everything should be i think it'll be like endearingly charming depending on how you play it you might be able to just bully my character to do doing a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh yeah uh if you said that you came back uh, you, you're saying you came back from the when you lost your other peoples that was a while ago so it isn't like you came back from a mission recently and had to go to the med bay or something right yeah basically my uh i'm just gonna reveal the entire backstory just because it's just not a huge deal Basically, I when I was like, like equivalent of seventeen years old, I joined the military because like, why not? And the, uh, and then the, it was uh, I I went through two separate tours. Uh, each time, uh, my unit got wiped down to a man, uh, me, um, and that kind of gave me some like bunch of field promotions. But a lot of people did not you know care for it like. There were rumors of, you know, uh, mutiny, sabotage, all that kind of unsavoriness. So I don't really have much uh, friends in the office core. And then when I came back from my uh, second commission, uh, hoping to just go into the uh, different sector, because my family has five members, um, five uh, siblings. Uh, both my parents are alive, uh, which is a rare for a PC, I know. Um, my oldest brother is in the um, in the. In, uh, in the Armada, uh, higher position in the Armada. My second oldest brother is in the, like, the Secret Service uh, wing of the military. Um, the eldest daughter uh, got married to a merchant house, so our household could, you know, uh, get more money and uh, connections. And when they were celebrating my return, um, there's a Barony of Lednev is run by the Baron. It's a meritocracy, but also a familial uh, structure. And there is a group in the um, Barony that wants to do democracy. And as a terrorist attack, uh, I got targeted. My youngest sister uh, took the bullet and died. Um, so in order to... The fact that I'm still alive means that the, there'll probably be a second uh, targeting. So... That's why they got sent away. And my uh, uh, siblings have said, we'll figure it out uh, on our own. Uh, don't worry about it. You just kind of take an extended big vacation. But oh, no. I don't want to feel useless, especially after what's happened. So like, I'll do a spying. But as I said, like, I don't officially have a commission anymore. Like, I kept my uniform. But I don't officially like hold any real position, and unless you guys know much about the the military, you probably won't figure that out either. So mm. it's kind of like, yeah. That's... So you wouldn't have like spilled the beans to almost anybody about your story, other than I'm from this place, and that's about it. Yeah. Uh, basically, um, only thing that like yeah, this is just more out of character. Is like why I'm doing the thing I'm doing, and um, mm -hmm. why I, I appear so official. Like I am bullshitting my officialness. Uh, like, so we I'm, could we could think you're just a professional for hire captain person. Yeah, like I'm basically a truck driver, but uh, like I'm basically pretending that I'm actually on like a real escort mission. Type of thing. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> the real question is: Does your character feel like your entire family shoved you away because you're the target and they don't want to be in the crosshairs? Uh, not necessarily. Okay. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised and uh, i would almost expect it it's like i'm not upset yeah. by it because like i would have done the same thing kind of deal yeah it's like higher class and higher ranking officials and families they like operate differently it's like, it's like that expectation of being like yeah we have to protect like the greater majority of the family if you're just the one problem yeah i was and... gonna say you are or it's like okay well you managed to not fuck up this time and you didn't get assassinated so we're gonna say you you go play over there while we figure it out 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's also a, a big chance that the, the like, I'm also kind of in denial of a lot of things. Like, like, no one could really conspire against me. Like, because I technically haven't done anything wrong. But I just look very sus. Right? Who would want to? Who would want to kill a two-time military failure? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's fucking great. Right. It's, it's just funny. It's just Garrick. And Why bother to... assassinating him? Right. So it killer. seems like the whole vibe for the party is just, oh no, I'm the adult with the commander being the adult and the bird being the babysitter and every most of the others are just like oh we're just kind of happy to be here or easily manipulated or intimidated into doing what you want so i'll be the one making sure this ship runs at the same time honestly i'm okay. kind of glad that dan is playing the cowardly doctor i'm so sick and tired of the 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 jerk ass uh doctor trope the house popularized is like <laughs> finally someone that's actually like like too afraid to give me medicine Thank Look, God. I'll be the jerk, but in the way where I have, like, analytical, like, percentages of you will die if you do not do this. You should not go into that fight. There is a 78% chance you're going to get shot in the shoulder. That kind of bullshit. All right. And right. if you come back and get shot, I'll be like, I told you. Wait a minute. Is Yara just Chopper? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I'm Chopper. God damn it. <laughs> I'm, looking th I'm looking through everything. I'm like, yeah, they're Chopper. Chopper. Ah, I hate blood. No, but um, I, e I even had independent as the strength because they were they can take care of themselves for the most part. But that you know, there's taking care of yourself healthily, and then there's taking care of yourself as like I can survive, right? And so What's like they, mechanism. Yeah, they know how to they, like they could they could maintain the ship. They got the skills and stats for that. But uh, in terms of like all the other stuff, that's probably why they detach themselves to anybody who seems like remotely sort of like nice. Yeah, I mean, fucking chopper. God damn it, Chris. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Sadi. And, uh, I mean, to be fair, I did make fun of uh, Chris's, uh, was it a Taurus? Was like, he's a bunch of jewelry. You mean like Mr. T? <laughs> so yes! please don't be like, you can Mr. T. <sighs> it's fine. We can always shit on a character by uh, reducing them to a thing, being reductive. Mm -hmm. So, um,. <laughs> I want now that we've talked for a bit. I want to get a final tally on who's on the station and who's going to be coming to the station. Like who is already on the station and who wants to be heading there to like see the nomad or be at his like uh, trade hub, which is what the station is. Uh, I think that Zaldenrock, the Shikrai, is coming. Um. Anybody else I, coming? I just arrived. I don't know how well, that's kind of awkward because I was told about my position immediately upon arrival. So I don't know how you want to. Okay. Um, well, you would probably have needed to be on at least for a little bit. Okay. If the nomad, you know, knows that you're on the station and has like tabs on you and everything, unless you okay. want them to just become aware of you as you enter the station. No, I just want to say uh, they already know everything. Okay. Yeah, it took them a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You haven't been here that long. Okay. That's fine. Um, and Nolly, what about you? Nolly's been on the station for a bit, probably. You know, can't be, maybe not that long, maybe like a month or something, but. Okay. I think probably at least, it sounds like maybe at least Nolly and Sin probably have been on the station for a little bit. Yeah. I, Sin has probably been in and out for a while uh he's traveled mm. rather extensively because of his mission um and he's found that the nomad is a really really fabulous hub to get other places so he just he hangs out there and he has been there for quite a while okay mm. and what about yara um yara probably has been there for a while i i don't know of the concrete time frame from time frame yet but probably a while because she probably got picked up and probably had to like pay off a debt for like all of that or something and then it's like well i got nowhere else to go for now okay. um so i'd say at least at least as long as um what's his sin sin's the warp okay. creature yeah so sin, sin and creature, yara yeah. have been on for probably the longest so far yeah uh what about you go by shepherd yeah 
Shepard could be fresh or could be there for a while. I think either would work really well. It just depends on like maybe how we want to have that relationship between like Shepard and Yara as well. I feel like it would have been funny if we were on the opposite side, like someone was there and someone wasn't. And then that interaction of like two people being like, this is how you take care of people. Well, you mm. could also just meet by uh, being fresh on. Yeah, since Yara that's what I mean. Okay, so two of you are fresh arrived. Shepard and Baldenrock. Yeah. Okay. My name is Titan Shepard, and these are my favorite organics on Nomad Station. <laughs> cool. It's um, actually Frankian, but I don't like going by my first name. <laughs> yeah, who wants to know? All the other Titans have a stupid fucking metal name, so I like being called Shepard. It sounds cool. Constantius. <laughs> my name is... Oh, what's a, what's a stupid mineral name? Zinc. Plutonium. <laughs> zinc? What, are you making fun of zinc? <laughs> zinc is... You need, yeah. you need zinc. Zincium. Sugar, <laughs> the Simpsons thing is like, a, come back, zinc. Come back. I remember that. My name is uh, Unununium or something. Oh, God. <sighs> oh, there's Einstein, uh, Einsteinium, I think. Like, there's a, uh, like something that's named after Einstein, I think. One I just pulled up. This is also a fantasy world. There could be a bunch of different random I'm metals sure there that you could. can make up. But you want the, the one named after France. <laughs> Francium. Uh, Seaborgium. Seaborgium's mm. funny. Look, they all sounded stupid. So it was I like know, at least Francium kind of could be like, hey, I can go by Frankie. I didn't play uh, Titan despite the fact that I'm a big robot fetish. Because <laughs> of the names? Dude, I was there. I was in that mindset. Yeah, like, I wanted to be giant Mega Man, but it's like, no, not if I want to be called like this. Screw this. Yeah. Oh, you have to be called Bismuth. <laughs> there are some. Is no, the, no, 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 not, not Bismuth. Bismuth stung. Bismuthium. Bismuthing. Like you can't just be Bismuth. It has, it has to have all the other things. Ion. Bismuthion. Jesus. Yep. Bismuth, is, Bismuth is the male character name anyway, because it's- I'm tired for name. you. Thank you. You know, I for one am happy that BI4 gave us all of these weird rules for naming conventions. Me as a DM hates yes. it, but if I was a player, I'd be like, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my opinion. I, I do I do like it, no matter how stupid it is, if they gave us name, name conventions. It's just more flavor. Um, so, we kind of already know how you guys have bonds with, uh, the world. Like, my second bullet point, we kind of just load all of it into each other, which is fine. Uh, so I think now, as, like, a final thing, final topic, uh, we should go over agendas. I if Ooh. I didn't pick one. Well, okay, I'll, I'll this start. is the time yeah. to do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't pick a concrete up. one, but you and I talked about it, Chris. So. We did. Trying to find the page that it book. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, what page is it on? I don't know. I'm looking through my stupid. I think it's right before <laughs> factions. Yes, it's right before yes, factions. Um, I have my like... entire book tabbed, but uh, agendas was not one of the tabs because it's only one page long. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's right before factions on page 63, 62, and 60. And this is in the Embers of the Imperium or in the Genesis book? Embers of the Imperium. Embers. Okay, okay. Because the normal book does not, like the normal game does not have agendas. This is something yeah. unique to the I4. Also, it doesn't appear on your character sheet anywhere for that reason. Right. So I just can, put it on Desire. Yeah, you can, well, I would. I actually wouldn't put it on Desire because uh, that's a mechanical Shit. thing. I would put it under... There's like uh, backgrounds in the other. notes. Because the uh, that's yeah. right above the the, the motivations. Yeah. So it just yeah. Close. other field. Yeah, I would put it in other. That's the best place for it. But your motivations do have a mechanical, like you can tie your motivations to your agenda, but you shouldn't put the agenda in there. Because your motivations do have a mechanical element in that, like if somebody discovers your desire, they can use it against you in a social role, and then they'll get like uh, bonuses for their role. I don't want to die. Okay. If you threaten me with death, I will listen. That sort of thing. <laughs> yes. Yes. One of the fears that right. they offer is death. 
Um, but like, yeah, it's just like everyone's afraid to die, but you're like really afraid type of deal. Yeah, you probably probably Free. religious and superstitious. It about like it. supersedes all of your uh, all of your other. You know, I also made a roller for myself. I might just... In case you want them. Fire. And thank you, because I was conflating the two, because for some reason, when I was scrolling, it kept skipping the fucking page, so... Woohoo! Hmm. Might be because you have push this talk, and if 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 you have a certain key press, like it does, like do fast scroll. Yeah, it was also like for some reason, all of the other PDFs that I scroll through, it's like this rolling scroll, and mm. the core rule, like the Genesis books, for some reason, are doing like they skip to each page. So as I scroll, it just oh, like okay. jumps pages, and I finally fix the setting so it doesn't do that anymore. I have macros. Should appear far. So if you, I think you have to have macros enabled. Um, if you have it showing in your bar, then it should appear in the lower left corner. A macro. Uh, how do you turn on macros? I'm okay, so there's a little triple circle icon. Okay. In the tabs, that's where macros oh. live. Then the top Player one is macros. Up. If you just check off in bar, it'll create a button. You'll see it like. A... Okay, player motives. I see it now. Yeah. So if you press that, it. And you also have to do um, show macro quick bar. Oh yes, that's that's the thing that trips people up sometimes. Yeah. This okay, is just so... for the. The mo the motivations, not the agendas, right? This is just for motivations, because uh, right. yeah. we happened it happened to come up, uh, and I had made this tool for myself, and I was like, if some people don't have these uh, and they want to roll randomly, press this button. And... Yeah, you can just get inspired. But I need this button because sometimes you guys might decide to socially uh, talk to somebody that I didn't plan on anything for. <laughs> Right, uh, right. Fair. We might get into a into a Griftland style social boss battle with someone, and you got to randomly generate. Yeah, yeah and then the Yakuza music have, starts playing. This yeah. needs to have weaknesses and strengths. I mean, if it's a social battle with Yakuza mechanics, I'm fine with it. It's the Everett Clark Claire in Disco Elysium that I fear. Oh, no. <laughs> oh the uncomfortable chair. I I died to the uncomfortable chair. Oh no. Okay. I feel like this is probably going to need a little Disco Elysium, to be honest. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, I, I was kind of hoping that the uh, Shane's bird would be named Harrier. Because it's a bird. <laughs> <laughs> was like, Harrier, Harrier all Dubois on him, all Kutsaraki. Oh, also, do uh, you know how like the, his names are like Deeds and such? Crashed car. Got drunk. <laughs> Lost him. <laughs> Lost every. Area of the crashed car. All right. So that's just a, to, a tool for your motivations, and uh, your motivations have empty spaces next to them, so you can like uh, add more. Also, the uh, the core the the core main book for Genesis has ex examples. Uh, you don't have to follow them, but uh, they are pretty good. I'm, I gotta admit, like they do cover a good chunk. Yeah, these are taken from those. Like these are all the options from predetermined motivation. Um, as far as agendas, these are your long-term goals, and they're usually tied to a faction, or at least a specific individual, uh, at the very least, I guess. Um, they're this couple, I'll, um, I did not create a table for this, unfortunately. Um, you guys, does anybody not have the book, F.O.? Me. I could only find the Genesis one. I couldn't find the Embers of the Imperium book. Embers of the Imperium book? Oh, okay, you mean the... Okay. I will list them. At least the first word. And you don't need to necessarily use these exact things. These are just... 
uh, samples. Also remember oh. that there are factions that uh, exist outside your race as well, so you could work for them as well. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you don't you don't have to be like the faction that uh, you are. Like Shane doesn't have to be like allied to the Argent Flight. In fact, it sounds like he might be actively against them. Um, and of course, you can choose the Nomad. That wouldn't be out of place for you to do so. Especially for people already on the station. Uh, but examples they give are like Ascension, you want to like uh, get a promotion or like um, become a greater in like stature in some way. Revenge is one of them, which self explanatory. Knowledge, uh, you know, like the typical scientist kind of motivation of, oh, I would do anything to, to recover this artifact or something. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to make... I want knowledge, but I'm trying to figure out a more concrete goal. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything uh, could be supplying knowledge to someone else. Could be the SAR for you. The clan I mean, I, I could be trying to ruin out my SAR people since they're scattered. Yeah. Uh, That'd be fine. What I saw in the SAR family is very important to them. But maybe it's your own specific family that you somehow... I mean, if you lost agenda. Them, then yeah, definitely. I mean, I get the feeling that the, the, her vibe was kind of like she didn't have too many peeps, and so maybe she lost her last connection. So maybe she is like trying to see if there's any other Sar out there from her like lineage. Well, Guess what? You got a new family. Yeah, they're not them though. Well, and like you said, you were saying stuff about like trying to discover like um, more advanced communications tech. Yeah, it's cause... known that the Nomad has access to or at least knows about technology that no one knows about no that's one else does. true that was pretty much the idea for like the knowledge portion because i i was trying to understand the lore a little bit because the universe was kind of in a sense bigger or more connected before and then the 3000 happened and then like a lot of tech was lost right so was there kind of a way to communicate with everybody like 3000 years ago possibly or before that maybe years, definitely because, potentially you know, Mahawk Mohawk well, can do basically anything they fucking want. Yeah, and, and then the other thing is, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but the whole background with the Nomad is the Nomad just kind of showed up and they know about a bunch of stuff right before it happens. Like, it's, it's heavily implied, but they never admitted that they are literally from the future. Yes, it's super heavily implied, and people have uh, theories as to, like, who or what the Nomad is, um, but they just appeared one day. They bought the space station um which was originally ruled by and it still kind of is controlled by um like a group of six corporations but he owns them now and they answer to him uh i say him of course but it's it's just kind of unknown what they are what the nomad is they're just a I singular love... entity i wish that they turn into something like um the dread pirate roberts i mean it could be yeah. That's, one, yeah, that's one of the rumors too. It yeah. could right, be, it could be a small group of beings who all dress exactly the same and use voice scramblers and never show up at the same place. Yes, no, it, it, I like that idea it's, a lot. Just sorrows in a trench coat. Come on, <laughs> could also be that. Yeah. Oh no, GM, no which part title. did you shoot? You shot my leg. Oh, now there's only two of us. Um, so as far as benchmarks go, um, okay, so here's how agendas work. They have a number of benchmarks when you gain enough benchmarks you've supposedly like completed your agenda um and sometimes you might get a new agenda if the story deems it relevant but uh completing your agenda gives you some sort of tangible in-game reward and that can like the first two rewards that it offers are like like actually like quantifiable 75 xp which is a lot of xp but um, and another is just a quarter of a million ore currency, which is enough mm. to buy a ship. Another option is you might get a ship. So, same thing, really. Uh, another option is getting an artifact or finding, like, an important magical, not magical, but, you know, like, powerful item of some sort, probably worth about a quarter of a million. Um, right. 
or you might get a position of authority or command of like a warship or an detachment or something like in C's case maybe he actually gets people like a, a bunch of military units to follow him he gets command back or something yeah. so then agenda knowledge seek to discover the truth about the nomads warp tech is like that's fair that would like, be a fair one it would be more like uh uh maybe discover the secret of the nomad and like bring it back to uh your clan and so it's more vague you want it a little more vague a little bit more vague um but that's the right track. Just tie it to a faction or a person um, that you have secret allegiance to. Not somebody necessarily that you're trying to screw over, unless it's like revenge. Um, agendas. Mm -hmm. I could add. I could throw in a faction, to be honest. Maybe yeah, I'll I mean, email you a special I mean, you're faction. You're not against the SAR, so you could well, just I, do it for the SAR. Yeah, but I mean. Um, I don't know, technically I could do it without just having it as a sort of open but not necessarily important unless it needed to be thing. Like I I didn't say who I don't I don't know who they she was working for before she was part of like um the nomad, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's part of what happened. I mean you could also say that you were working for the pirate faction. Uh, uh was that the... could be true. I, I could have uh... been bullied into it. <laughs> oh god, your life is so sad. Honestly, the <laughs> Mentac kinda works for for you guys in the star. Yeah, uh, Mentec Coalition is like the uh, League of Pirates. Yeah, yeah you guys I, face them could... in your uh, one shot. Also, uh, they hate the uh, uh, Kellerists because they're like, the UN is bringing law, and we don't want law around here. Yeah, yeah, maybe that would make sense. It's like my original field research crew got basically blown up, and that was like my sort of SAR family, and I'm trying to see if anybody else survives. That's fair. And I was trying to find a like a, a link to a list of the factions, for like easier browsing, but Board Game Geek is down. It's still down, oh, no. apparently. Weird. Yeah. Well, I might have to link to Fandom Wiki, which I don't don't like doing. <laughs> but also, if you notice me hitting ban buttons in Twitch, it's because I'm going through your bots. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're, you're collecting a bunch of like urchins over here. Fine. No, that's not fine. They're scrapping data. Scraping. Ah, scraping. I see, I, I see that uh, you like to play Rage Shadow Legends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, this isn't necessarily for entertainment either. Uh, this is just kind of almost a record, which I'm okay yeah. with. Oh no, you're good. I'm just, I'm just cleaning. It's cleaning on the back end. I'll put this fandom thing in Genesis. This is a link How? to just a list of the factions in alphabetical order and they're like icon. Unfortunately, you'll have to click through them. Also, some of the factions are not in the book uh, because you just don't want to talk to them. Yes, some are like listed in the back as like adversaries. Um, namely ones like the Vuilwraith Cabal or the Mahakt Jean Sorcerers. <laughs> Or the yeah. ne necrovirus is like, don't work for them. You're gonna die. Stop that. Yeah, and honestly, though, I wouldn't mind if you had an agenda to a villain or a villainous faction. Though, don't discount that if you want to have that. If you think it would yeah. be interesting, yeah. Also, the Imperian are not villains, despite the fact that they're shady as fuck. So, if you want to do that, that's also fine. I love the Imperian. They're my favorite. They're vampire aliens that don't have mouths and the only way to that they can communicate is via radio signals which it's hard to get a hold of a, a radio transmitter in today's day and age so they just kind of make weird sonic noises at you also all they do is stare if you stare back they they go away but all they do is just stare they and, and so like um it's been rumored that all the like the winged angels and vamp and like uh, demons are basically just them making landfall because the um, their lore is uh, throughout uh, multiple cultures' history the same motif of winged humanoids making contact with the clouds have been uh, shown through various cultures. And they're like, Ugh, these guys have been around, been around, just staring. 
Also, they're the only other faction that live in the center of the galaxy, uh, next to the Mohawk. And the center of the galaxy is a massive gravity well, where most ships can't go through. So just like, they're creepy. They're yeah. not evil, but they're just creepy. What are you doing I'm... there? Ooh. I'm what are you doing there? doing there, weird radio noises? Sar. Um, not the Sar. What, so what was their origin plan? I'm trying to concrete that. Uh, they don't have an origin plan. Well, no, it was, is the operative word. Yeah, that's origin plan was destroyed uh okay. and that would have been like in the thousands of years ago i think okay so they always kind of have the sort of nomad so they are kind of like nomad -y anyway yep all right literally oh. their board game mechanic is that their space docks unlike other factions can move mm -hmm. they just they just take their home planet and bring it with them yeah they also have interesting lore they're actually one of the older races like they have been around for a long time but when their home planet got destroyed they were kind of reduced to being seen as basically like the equivalent of romani in the universe and yeah. like people just stopped respecting them and like, huh, you don't have a home so like uh start prejudice against you yeah you dirty vagrants okay so so yara is or she's gonna be majoring in communications yep that, that's a fair motivation <laughs> Comms major. <laughs> comms major. So that's the original field research was trying to do that. And then they got raided by pirates and she barely survived. There we go. Nice. Well, that's one agenda. Can you clarify an agenda for the people in the back who like might not know what an agenda is? Agenda, an agenda is a long term goal that you are working towards uh, in which you have allegiance to a faction um or a person or potentially like a secret en enmity towards a faction it's just something that's gonna take a while to do and okay. can have concrete steps to get there in terms of benchmarks i want to unlock enough information to find other sar peeps essentially by using the nomads okay. tech so ali if you don't want to do since you're not the book if you don't want to do a faction stuff there's a couple of other options as well. Um, ascension. So you want to climb through the ranks. Mm -hmm. Revenge. Uh, you want to basically, uh, you have a re do a revenge on a certain target. Mm -hmm. um, knowledge. Uh, you're uh, trying to learn information that no one else has. Discover an artifact. Or do like a really forbidden like experiment or something like that. Ooh. Um, uh, absolution uh, basically um, uh, you are trying to you're trying to be um, my name is Earl you done you fucked mm -hmm. up and you're trying to make amends for it I kind um, of feel like that's neat for your character there's um, a couple of options like because I was thinking of going like you know trying to be like very good aligned with like how I would do things like helpful well, the best term. is particularly like uh, you've done something wrong and you want to make things better right so if like, you want to be, if you want to be really good, the uh, next one is liberty. Uh, you want to basically uh, stop slavers uh, um, and take any actions against people that are like ex uh, exploitative and uh, and take slaves and things like that. You want to be uh, a, a, a force of liberation. It could even be <laughs> perhaps. I will create chaos by liberating everyone. It could even be perhaps liberating any titans that might be under the thrall of the Mahakt or freeing mm -hmm. people from the thrall from of the, the Mahakt. Mahakt. Yeah. Also, uh, the devotion, uh, basically, uh, you're basically uh, sending information to the um, to your faction. Uh, basically, anything that's like that's kind of the nebulous, like support your faction that's not in the faction specific agenda. Mm -hmm. Because faction specific agendas have like some unique things that are uh, tied to the faction. Uh, resourcefulness is money. I want money, money, money. money. money, money. Send or yeah. save a large payment of 1,000 already or more. <laughs> money. See, when it comes to like, if there's faction stuff for the Titans, I can't imagine anything being any better than I have to feed daddy. Just giving information to like the hive. Uh, let's see, the Titans have... Um... Through the research of myth and legends, identify the resting place of several sleeping titans and, and travel to their location and awaken them. Uh, seek out a band of uncertain titans who have stayed uh, 
straight from the oversight of the Wu and the Titan elders and convinced them to reintegrate into Titan, uh, Titan uh, society. Um, or since you like the Titans like to, uh, they're like gardeners of the world. Right. Uh, uncover the genetic sequence for a number of rare extinct creatures. They bring him back to Elysium where they can be resurrected and placed in a newly created bio. Oh man, time to create inside. mammoths. Yeah. <laughs> mm. God, they're also really... weird. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the faction specific stuff that if you want yeah. to go into. As each faction yeah. has sample benchmarks for your agenda. That's another yeah. reason to tie it to a faction. When the Chris was asking for like, rumors and such, my, well, two of my character rumors was, I'm here to do this faction specific agenda. And my aunt is like, the answer was, no, it's actually not. I just wish I was. Yeah, that's right. I did uh, at one point ask you guys for rumors, but I don't even know if I did it to, to everybody. I think I just did it to one group of people. That yeah. Might be, yeah, I don't remember getting it. <laughs> that might be another thing of homework for next time. Um, I already did it. Yeah, I did it too. So uh, For Harrison and Shane specifically then. Um, and me, because I did not read. Oh, yeah, what are, I, what are the rumors portion? No. Oh, okay. I chose that. Two of you. <laughs> <laughs> Me checking in on my, my chat? No. Uh, I think it's two truths and three lies. Something. Okay. okay. Of our character? It's two? not necessarily like a particular quantity. There's things that are true, sort of true, and complete falsities. Oh, it's a number like... of them equal to the players. Sorry. Oh, okay. So, um, gotcha. I would say uh, three truths and three lies. Right, because you have to pass them out to all the other players. Yeah. And then we're oh, going to share that. them with each other so that we have heard of each other. Uh, some of them time. might not be true, though. My, my question is, like, um, would it matter, despite the, considering that we did share a lot of our characters? I think it'd be kind of neat, because then, like, even some knowing... Some stuff might be. Yeah, yeah, but even us knowing what's going on for some of the characters already, having that rumor and be like, this is what your character perceives. This is how they mm. view them. Would they be might also have neat. been dealing with the rumor. Like, if, if it's a... if Like, people might have... Like, for a rumor for your character would have been you caused the sabotage, possibly. But you, your character would be reacting to hearing that all the time type thing. Right. right. Part of how you see yourself and how other people see mm -hmm. you, whether that's true or not. So I think it's still a valuable character exercise, even though we've yeah. shared a lot about our character. Yeah, yeah. Even I though when someone gets handed have some. Even though it's when someone gets handed one, they'll be immediately able to tell if it's a lie or not, potentially. It's, I think no, it's but it's the difference between player knowledge versus character knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, you said you need like two yeses. Uh, I'm gonna say three and three, because there's six players. Okay. Well, there's six players, and we only need five. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, need to write some right. new ones. Okay, two truths, three lies. Okay, I'm going to uh, make some new stuff up then, because I only have one truth. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go make up some bullshit. <laughs> no, I... I gotta make up some, some truths. I was <laughs> truths are hard sometimes. Oh well, yeah. One of them was like the character is terminally ill. No, he's just suffering from a mild Z tab addiction. Oh he's like a cigarette addiction. I love it. Are you telling me that he's Garrick? He's on drugs all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is a great opportunity for like stupid little things too. Like, all right, fine, Chris. I'll watch Deep Space Nine. I'll, I'll go torrent it now. <laughs> Why does like, Garrick act like that? Well, for the first half of the show, he's on drugs. For the second half of the show. <laughs> He's not on drugs, and he needs to be on drugs. <laughs> and he should be. <laughs> also, like the, like one of my rumors, like the character is actually an AWOL soldier that's uh, wanted back in the Pompeii. No, he's done his tour. This is more like a vacation. Also, like, like, oh, this character supposedly killed every one of his crew. It's like, no, he's just unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> right. So. Was that, that's another part of our homework. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. But back to agendas. Back to yes, the agenda. agendas. Uh, it um, doesn't really matter what your reward is, because uh, that'll be like decided later. It's just kind of important. And you don't even need to worry about what the benchmarks are, honestly, either. It, we just need like a like a name of the agenda like and a goal. And like a general, like one sentence goal. 
a long term goal. Yeah. Yeah. So for Nollies, uh, we had talked about this before, Chris, and I think you offered up this idea and I liked it. Um, her agenda is actually tied to the Nalu Collective, which is the race of reptilian telepathic schemer manipulator people. Mm. Yes. Yeah, what? Um, because everyone, I mean, it's it's not exactly subtle. The whole born at anything keyed in. Nolly's the truth about Nolly is that she's from a Nalu sleeper agent program that takes other races and brainwashes them to basically insert sleeper agent spies around. And she escaped, and in her fugue state, the element of her programming that kicked in was she was being trained to be a sleeper agent to research the Nomad. And so that's why she, you know, stole a shuttle and flew it to the Nomad, but then, you know, suffered a mental break and now she doesn't remember anything. And that's why she, you know, occasionally has these aptitudes that align with being a sleeper agent spy. But she she can never she can't act but she can't access them reliably or anything. They're currently sleeping. Yeah. So her agenda is to discover information about the nomad and feed it back to the Nalu, but when that protocol will kick in, who knows? So in a weird way, do you wanna have two agendas? I mean, I know this is uh, some kind of extreme, but it's all it's it, you got the you got the Planescape Torment almost effect where you're two different people in a way, right? There's going to be pre program and then there's after program and then yeah, maybe maybe you want a slightly different motivation until then. It can still be similar, but you know what I'm I saying? I think knowledge is the overarching one because you want to uncover knowledge about your past yeah. and your true identity, but in the later benchmarks, it becomes I need to uh, get information back to the Nalu. If if you let that take over your character, too. Yeah, or it could be the other way around. Well, I was going to say, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but we've already talked about this whole dominant personality overlay thing and about getting a chunk of XP for completing your uh, objective. So that there's a possible arc where she figures out what she is after, you know, so not knowing, you know, she has like whatever, like a fugue state where she's been sending information back to the Nalu, but finally figures out what she's been doing in that and reconciles the two together and finally becomes able to actually control that part of her brain a little bit better. And so that would be like the dominant personality overlay. Then she actually gets to access some of those skills on command. Hmm. Rad. Yeah, the boost in XP is a boost of like recovering your lost memories. Right. If it gets that far, that I was like, that would be interesting. But I like this. This sounds good. Generalizing it in knowledge, because you're right, Chris, it can sort of evolve by benchmark. Okay. Cool. I'm like writing notes for myself, too. Yours is knowledge. Yara's was also knowledge, but different. Yep. Different goals with the knowledge. Yeah. Fine. Nerds. Nerds. I'll go with liberty, because I think that's going to be fun. Okay. The idea liberty that people? liberty, well, the overarching version, I think, is perfect because then it works for multiple scenarios. Like, say, if there's other uh, titans that are still underneath, like, the control of the Mentac, then I can help them, but also just people in general. Uh, yeah. So I think that one works kind of as a nice generalized version. Okay. I need to take a look at the map because I have some weird things I could do. I have them. I uh, think it's in the thing. No, it's in the, the, the voice chat, uh, chat, text chat on the side. Oh. It's the one that I said. Yeah, I'll have to create a out for that. Be able to do. Be quick. It took a while to stitch this thing. <laughs> Oh, not even that one. There's like a different one. Oh, okay. Oh, you mean like the, the within the RPG? Yeah. I just got. Oh, find that it. map. Oh, it's a F. I don't know if I can put a F. I don't know. I think roll twenty X. S. Whatever you're doing, I can hear your computer. Oh yeah. Did it just? Oh, okay. 
I don't need to make a handout or anything. It's actually just... There it is. Now I can't. Oh. I want to share it with all players. Oop. Fancy. Ah, oh, there it is. I've never seen this. Is yeah, this is interesting. This is odd. <laughs> so Pelanic got teleported into the center five years ago, and the Mahawk arrived. Yeah, the the Ixth. Yeah, Ixth. So is Ixth alive or is it not doing well? Uh, I no mean, one knows. No one's out there. Yeah, nobody's nobody really knows. Okay, and where is the Nomad place anyway? Nomad is south. Directly south oh. in that southern area. Arcturus. Uh, Arcturus. Arcturus. Okay. I could, I could make an argument that maybe um, maybe our station, because she was going to be isolated from, maybe I was in a station that observed the planet appearing in the center a little bit before the station got just like our little research vessel got destroyed type thing. Also, we have to remember that uh, these, a lot of these things, uh, even though they're labeled, don't mm -hmm. actually have any lore on them. Like the yeah. Loki system. No one knows what the fuck's going on in the Loki system. Mm -hmm. If I'm like floating around in between the Loki and Zix area, I could see like something appearing. I don't know, that's just a thought. Yeah, um, with the gravity well is a real... Okay, so, you know, that I said the gravity well is a real bitch and like uh, no one goes near the center. Mm -hmm. Ixt and the Dark. That's where the, uh, the Mohawk and then the Imperial are at. Creepy fellas, why are you there? Imagine if, like, <laughs> you know the meme that is like, imagine if, like, so-and-so just suddenly came back for one day and said, it's pronounced blank, and then left. Mm -hmm. I imagine, like, ima what if the Mahawked came in and just said, it's pronounced ninth, and then left? Jesus. Oh my god. <laughs> That's funny. No! I like it. <laughs> yeah. Especially with your inspiration character. <laughs> right. Well, then that, that, that just creates more questions, like, what happened to the first eight? Oh right. no. <laughs> well, you see, seven, eight, nine. So the real question is, where's seven? Oh no. <laughs> you ask the Mahog when they come back, why did you come back? You were running away from seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, so, okay, a little bit more map lore. So the Mahogs are currently in the center doing weird stuff. Yes. Where are the other two evil factions? The robot ones are on the edges of what side? So. The, uh, go to the very left, we'll see, uh, Asheron, mm -hmm. kind of, uh, on one of the outside rings. Yeah. And just above that is Mordai 2. That is where the ah. necrovirus. Where mm -hmm. Mordai? That's where the, <laughs> the robots are doing their uprising. And is it the has system all the way on the left? The 0.0.0? 0 .0 .0? Oh, yes. okay, yeah, that's why I couldn't find it. Um because I didn't know it was called the has system. But uh yeah, zero, zero, 0 at, is the planet called Null. That is where the L1 V1 are from. The Lizix. Uh, what portion is that on? Bottom... That is below Asheron. <laughs> Literally yeah. do oh. perfectly yeah, do wet. Ashes Ashes sandwich between the necrovirus and the uh, the Lizix. Yeah, that whole side. A terrible time. I'll our, be on the other side of the galaxy. Thank you. Our villains are set in scenic west of the galaxy. <laughs> oh yeah. By the way, uh, don't go uh, southwest either, uh, because that's all like ancient Mohawk territory, like the like the mole system. And uh, okay, the the system at the very bottom called Hope's End. A uh, bunch of treasures. Supposedly, a bunch of people die there. Don't do that. Also, the um, um, the southwest uh, is basically all ran by pirates. The mall so, system so is the place where the Lazax sent all their prisoners, and all of their prisoners became the Mentac Coalition, who are now you pirates. Australia, you it's, fools. it's galactic Australia, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, the West Coast sucks, is basically what we were saying. Yeah, no, I'm like, wait yeah. a second, everything is in this, like, almost, like, corner of the galaxy, and, and it's And you terrible. might be asking yourself, what about Mechatol Rex? I heard that that was an important, like, 
center yeah. of the galaxy. That is not Where in the is center it? of the galaxy. We'll probably be looking for it. Um, it is up, up, up. I need to... I actually don't oh, know where it is. In the, in the ghoul the system. The ghoul system. Ghoul system. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the... Oh, the ghoul G system. Yeah, ghoul system. The ghoul. Where's that one top the right? The pink one uh, on the okay. northern arm of the great mm. heart of the galaxy. Yeah, it's, it's right next to... Uh, underneath the uh, Kaffa. And then right above uh, Kostwoth. It's near Mir. <laughs> near Mir. Supposedly the center of the galaxy. Yeah. Right. You know, the center of the galaxy. Top right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, by sense. the way, uh, Jay, your race, uh, the Krius. Yeah, uh, they're, they're Shillary Passage. Yep. Yeah, Shillary Passage. Uh, you, you, came, you came in a shithole. You came in the west coast. <laughs> yep, we're the... Bad... Oh, I see. I see yeah, where it is, yeah. Yeah. They're, they Ooh, you're having a bad time, too. Maybe yes. All of you just need to hang out with, like, Elysium. Far, far away from all of that. Far north, top right area. It's a Dyson sphere. Yes. Cool. Um, and the Shaliri Passage is not even a planet. That is a wormhole to the Kreeves planet. That is the dimension. Yeah. This is just the material world. It's very strange. You will uh, mm. see <laughs> that the Joran system, which is east part uh, near New Terra. The Jorun system has Rog and Lysis too. That is where the Sar are currently hanging out. Alright, I have to look at that. Oh, what was that one called again? The Jorun the Jor system. You said it was on the east? Yeah. East, uh, southeast. 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 You're on the edge of the galaxy. Planet underneath it, just called Ra. Oh, so I a, yeah, we would have. I would have been part of a different group if I was chilling all the way by it. Okay, yeah. that's fine. And you will see right a little to the west of that is Ren Terra and Arc Prime. That's where the Letnev are from. Mm. This is this is very useful, actually. I think doing this little tour. <laughs> yeah. Where are the birds from? from? The west Coast. Oh, the, oh, the birds. birds. They're near Asheron. Oh, right, right of Asheron, Horus. The, the forest system. Wait, so the birds are in the middle of it too? They were supposed oh, we to are... guard it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now we don't were... let these guys get out. <laughs> um, they, they actually, um, when the Lazax tasked them with that, like 3,000 years ago, they uh, erased all knowledge of the sh uh, the Shikrai like from their databases and destroyed all maps so that nobody could actually get there anymore. They created like the Sith prisms. Kind of, yeah. The Kreus then uh, tried to find it because they're little shits. Mm. <laughs> Oops. Uh, actually, it's it's worse than that, but I won't get into it. Anyway. Great. Oops, great. <laughs> the Lasix were like, well, help make your planetary systems more hospitable for living. Uh, don't let these assholes out, please. Exactly. And uh, finally, the soul system. The soul system is nowhere near Mechatol Rex. It's actually right next to uh, the, the Nomad system, Arcturus. You'll find it just south. Soul system. Yord. Alright, which one was that for? Because I see it. I just didn't remember. Uh, that's the humans. Oh, okay. Soul yeah, means soul. soul. And your means Earth. Your little pale Supposedly. All right. Uh, oh, there's so a wormhole to Elysium Le too down there. Yes. Uh, so the the humans and the Latinev fought over that. The humans won. Uh, so right next to the the Quan wormhole, Quan, uh, humans occupy that. One of the the faction of Gendes the Latinev have is an option. Is to undermine the defenses of Quan, so that the Lead Nephi eventually invade and take control of them. Oh, that is kind of dickish that the humans have both wormholes. <laughs> yes. Uh, to be clear, uh, the wormholes work like they do in the board game, in that the ones that say A or Alpha connect to each other. The ones that say B or Beta connect to each other. So there's three points. Yeah. 
Yes, so there's the two at the bottom for uh, beta wormholes and the Stygian passage at the, the north of the galaxy that's connect, also connected to the beta wormholes. It lets people get quickly across the galaxy. Mm -hmm. You know, as they do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the map. You have access to Thanks. Neato. Neat. Um, it is getting a little late. Uh, so I guess I'll just try and go through and uh, see if anybody else has any agendas. I know Shepherds I'll, I'll was vaguely because it's, Liberty. Yeah, I'll do mine just because it's uh, simple. Sure. Uh, Baron of Ludden have agenda. Uh, steal other factions uh, ship techs. <laughs> I'm gonna try to be a spy. I'm gonna try. Okay. So is that knowledge? I mean, it's under the faction thing, so if you want to put it under knowledge, that's fine, but the I got, from, I got it from the, the faction sheet. Yeah, uh, the faction sheet is, um, like, those are benchmarks, potentially. This is supposed really? to be benchmarks, okay. yeah. Um, like, those are the things that you need four of total to, like, um, to finish your oh, agenda. The number okay. is four, by the way. It's a faction specific agenda, so I thought the agenda was the entire thing. Yeah, no, it was, it's just, um... I mean, maybe it could be. I guess uh, it could be. Because then it's whatever uh, that, that case, agenda uh, is. It's very the open, focus though. of the faction. Okay, I think in that case, just devotion. Because uh, pro Lednev, fuck democracy. Oh, Every so time. basically you're giving them money. Or you can give them a ship which is equal to money. Devotion is anything that helps my faction become right. top. Not, yeah. that, not that I'm implying that the, we weren't at top already. But, you know, more at top. Question. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you care about the faction more, or do you care about your status in the faction more? Oh yeah, that's true. Because one um, of them is Ascension. Yeah, if you um, want to be a ruler of your place, you're more notoriety versus if you care about your faction. No, cause. I am devoted to barony above all. Okay, that's cool. That's more Ascension then, right? Yeah, it was more just like which one is it, and mm -hmm. any answer. Like I don't mind, I don't mind my rank. Uh, I just don't want. I just want my activity to have benefit to sure. my faction. Okay, sin. Liberty. Liberty, liberty, liberty. Liberty, liberty. Okay. Yeah, so liberty former Crim Crimson Legionnaire, and yes, that is... Yes, I told you all, but no, that is not common knowledge at all. <laughs> um, is it even in a rumor? No, I don't actually. know how many people even know what the Crimson Legionnaires are. Honestly, that's, that's true. They are only five years older. And that's yeah. kind of uh, knowledge that only other Krius would probably be privy to. Yeah, so um, anyway, so his whole liberty agenda is to find and deliver Crimson Legionnaires to the Krius for further study slash rehabilitation. Because hmm. he wants to fix it. He prioritizes agency. Okay. It's also why I was saying mine was like a general thing because I can go after like titans and help them until that knowledge becomes more public. Okay, help titans become free from the, the hot kind of. Yeah, yeah. Just gotta be old ones roaming around. You yeah, gotta go do a shadow of the colossus kind there of bullshit. Absolutely are. All right. Uh, last but not least, Zaldin Rock. All right. I think I want to take one of the embers of Mawa and throw them at a Mahat and watch him. Load. That that'd be Fuck really yeah. wicked cool. <laughs> no, I I'm looking at the because I'm assuming it's gonna be something related to that. Probably close to the second uh, faction specific agenda for the Argent Flight. Identify a specific Mahat gene plot, gene sorcerer plot. Report them to the Murmuration, which is, I forget exactly what it is. It's but like it's their like, rulers. Yeah, they're. It's called a murmuration. A means to disrupt. But could we somehow wrap this in like absolution since we were kind of the ones that like let them get out or well, they yeah. got out under our watch? So I maybe, would imagine like, that you as a like character feel responsible almost, even though it was something that was not tasked of you as a person, but tasked of right. your planets or your, your faction. Like, yeah. fucking 3,000 years ago, but you probably have some sort of guilt about it, so oh, we man, can call it absolution. absolution. Shame was right. the job. 
No. <laughs> oh, I would. They wouldn't no, have gotten it? out on my watch. Uh, where do we put these now? Oh, notable feature. No, put it on your uh, other above the uh, other. Retirement. Yeah. Because that's what the other. other. Yeah. The first Solution. Yeah. I'm gonna put find a way to stop the mock, the mocked. Oh boy, that's a tall order. I know it's a tall order, but yeah, I, know. I think it's like I think it's one step plot. below stop the mocked. Because <laughs> or that's probably like the campaign's over. Uh, Shane, you finished least... your agenda. Would you like a free ship? <laughs> <laughs> at least find like not necessarily a way to actually you know end the whole thing but to like slow them down or find a way to combat them right yeah, a weakness okay yeah find a that's a good one find a weakness the mahakt and report it to the murmuration yeah and kind of probably in and report it to the murmuration and not be like, I think we should take all the Argent flight and blah, 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 let's do it. I'll be like, I have my people that we figured this out with. We might be able to help or whatever. Yeah, we, yeah, need, or even, we need resources. Or even be yeah. like, yeah, like, hey, I figured this out. I'm going to act on it. So if you guys also want to help me out, go right ahead. But right. I'm not putting this through the official channels. Or like, we need you guys to do a distraction <laughs> or something. Yeah. That sounds big enough to work okay so it looks like everybody yeah everybody has an agenda and has generally what the the end game of that agenda is we don't need to have specific benchmarks but like if something comes up maybe i'll say to you that counts as a benchmark or you could ask of me does this count as a benchmark also buy us story points uh which you guys have done the one shot so you know how story points work it's a, a you know points that go back and forth between the player group and the uh, and the DM, so you can use story points to invent new ways to try and further your agenda. So that could be as vague as something like, "I spend a story point to try to further my agenda." You could just ask that of the DM, and then I might be able to come up with something on the spot, or I might just like try to invent a, a thread to lead there in the future. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so don't be afraid to, like, do that, but try to do it if it's in a place that you think it makes sense. Like, oh, we're dealing with the Mahakt right now, and we're in, like, one of their secret bases or something, and yeah. I access a computer panel. Like, say something like that. You learn don't, something like, come important. up with it every session. Yeah, just it's to not try like to get your XP. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, we're on the Nomad Station. Um, can I find a Crimson Leaf? <laughs> Are there any? Can I say that one's walking past right now? <laughs> hey, look, it's Bob yeah. in the corner. He's in a. Hey, <laughs> I, I know that guy. Let's on get the flip him. Side, could we say if we completed like a mission, I could use a story point to maybe get like a, a council with like somebody closer to the Nomad or something, or get access to something in there? Potentially, I would say that a story point could. Maybe get you like an audience. Oh, I was just thinking like somebody secondary, but that'd be cool too. <laughs> yeah, like maybe not every time, but like sometimes. Um, and we will definitely have like downtime points, but uh, not points as in scores, but there will be times when there is downtime, I think. And you'll be able to freely do stuff, but it isn't really as structured as it is uh, from like fifth edition. Like, would you like to do crime? Okay, we're gonna do three rolls for this. It'll be more like, what's your character up to in the So you might be able to do stuff uh, at that point, but I think it's more narratively interesting to go after agendas during the game in a mission. Anyway, there's not enough time really uh, to go into an encounter and that's fine because I, with all this new information, I almost wanna change the encounters and stuff I had planned. Um, and now I, we know a lot about each other's characters. We know a lot about, um, like the campaign world and the, the space that we're in. Uh, I guess that's a fun, um, the kind of vibe we go. On. Yeah. The vibe. It seems like the Mentak are kind of be, or be like our goblins and kobolds and then the Mahak <laughs> is going to be the big bads. Sure. I mean, I had you guys face the Mentak in our one shot because they seemed like good, like generic villains to, yeah. 
this was what I was so afraid of. It's like, can we face anything but the Mahogs? They're so goddamn scary. They are. And I, there is actually a uh, campaign setting that's coming out, like, in quarter one of this year, apparently, um, that has the Mahakta as the main villain. They're, like, publishing an adventure for this setting. Let's see if ours correlates in any weird way. Yeah. So I'm, Mentak are, like, doing smuggling sure. for the Mahawk, and then we discover that or some shit. I'm sure Chris will invent something, and then it'll be that thing in the book published, and he'll be like, damn it, they took my thing again. That happens every time that I do something. And then you have to go, like, it should have been me, not them, but me. Let's, <laughs> let's make this magical city and stuff. Ravnica comes out. Damn it! Um... <clears throat> Oh, but let's let's uh, have this guy that actually doesn't have powers, and he wants to have like rights for for people that don't have powers. Oh, uh, you mean Legend of Korra, Amon, uh, that guy? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm only frustrated. But anyway, um, yeah, we've had some good things to do here. We will do rumors uh, as homework. Two truths, three lies, because there's we need five rumors. And then um, I'm going to give everybody the safety sheet to fill out. Survey. Yeah, the survey. Um, so fill that out uh, on your own time. And, uh, oh, uh, portraits, if you have them, or at least a description of your character. And I'm working on a dog. Yeah. I'm going to look <laughs> at birds. And I'll, hey. I'll send this out to... Yeah, I have any I have description stuff in um, my character sheet. So That's perfect. I'm basically um, making Laika. <laughs> That's nice. so cute. Wait, uh... I realize my character's literally Laika. Laika from what? Laika from the, the, uh... The Russian cosmonaut who died okay. alone in space. Oh, sorry, I've been oh. playing a game called Laika dog with, on motorcycle? with a dog person, so... Wait, I heard a really beautiful, kind of sad, morbid story. So, Laika was the first dog sent to space and yeah. died while in space, right? Yeah. So, I know what you're talking about. Yep. So there's like a legend where if a dog had died at like a cemetery or near a cemetery, they guard the cemetery and they guard the spirit. Oh, so no. because it's just an empty void in space and Laika was the first dog that died there, any like anything up there around Earth space is their cemetery that they guard. There's a little dog that a little dog ghost that comes by. Yeah. So what you're saying is that if he if he go to space, encounter a space ghost, it's, it's like, a, like a like a dog. Yeah. No worries, not aliens. It's a little dead dog ghost. All right. It's got glowing red eyes. It's just a, a grim. It's fine. Um, well, it's eleven, and oh. normally we go from nine to midnight, but we've changed our uh, we moved it back by an hour, so we're gonna do eight to eleven. Which I think oh, is good. fine. I think it lets people yeah. sleep a bit. Let's Harrison yeah. not uh die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still have to, I still have to get up and shovel in the morning before work. Oh, oh I did that tonight. Sure. Well, yeah, I well, yeah, I shoveled, but then right, it'll be right. So, I actually haven't checked. Has it stopped? I, I think uh, it yeah, stopped. I think here. it stopped a couple hours ago. Okay. In my area, okay. I think it did. It stopped here, but it might like... restart. Hmm. Yay! So anyway, um, love yeah. and hugs. If, if there's if there's people, we'll try and raid. But otherwise, uh, we will see you guys next time. Uh, we're gonna stream next Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll also probably be streaming during the week, doing like variety stuff, maybe prep stuff at this point. Um, yeah. I well, hope you guys have a good night. See you next time for Twilight Imperium. Alright, thank oh. you, Chris. Yay! Yeah, have a good night. Alright, take care, y'all. Good night. Peace.